some are not kids. And there may be a little push, pull and push when it comes to Miami and the some are not kids. Miami uh, has just lost dad, Keontra Smith. Um, two some are not kids. I, I don't know why I feel like I'm missing one. So the relationship he has with Josiah Trader and 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 number one wide receiver nation over there, uh, JJ, that's kind of with DVD also. He, he's a huge part in that recruitment. So my question to you guys, man, in the comment section, like um, he was on the field before. That The value that Demarcus Van Dyke brings to the staff, because eventually somebody's going to try to take him. If he stay off the field, he wants to be on the field. Eventually, somebody's gonna try to take him. Is that value enough to lose a coach and bring him on? Um, or do you feel that he needs to show more as an on coach field? Um, just the recruiting part of it, just not enough. Let me know in the comment section. I would love to know how you guys see that. Um, to me, I, I would think that uh, the names that are when we're talking about future gets and 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 actually this class here hasn't been any announcements like almost 20 you say that's the problem okay so we, um or do you see it a different different way let me know in the comment section per team. they thought it was like you know six seven players per team and stuff like that he didn't know it would get to 16 like almost 20 you say that's the problem okay so we can say colleges didn't expect this not not double digits that's the whole team but they, but oh, so we can say they they expected it to be wild, but they didn't expect it to be girls going yeah, wild. Yeah, they, yeah, they, <laughs> they expected it to be wild, but not the wild. Ones. Um, so so college, because we're we're in charter waters now, where where none of this has been seen before, uh, and we keep forgetting that we keep forgetting, thinking our coach got the answer, they coach got the answer. They, you know what it is. Remember when um the NFL and the NFL. Remember when the uh, what is the Jaguars and Panthers. When they first came to the league, uh -huh. and they had all the free agents just sitting there, and they were like, "Man, shit, y'all better go get with us." Right, 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 right. That's what it is, man. It's like, sure, it's nothing but free agents just sitting there. Go. Right, right, right. So, and so, so we keep thinking that people have answers, and to have answers, you have had to be a visionary to see um, what's happening. Alerts keep going off on my phone. Somebody do do jump in the I'm trying to figure out why they like why are your kids three days late? Like why 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 are they jumping in there? They straggling in the portal. It's, it's not possible to understand what's happening because it's you know every year you have grad grad transfer okay, I'm gonna leave and I go to the school. Right. That's not even the case anymore. Now you got freshmen who just got to school saying hey I'm leaving. Right. So now South when you when you when you on the field, is it pregame? Like, is it ever? You ever? Are you ever afraid? Does you ever feel fear, or do you ever feel pressure? Do you ever feel pressure? No. 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 They shot my dog. No. They shot my dog. Cloud that mercy. Yeah, who's tough for that play? I don't see nobody. He was gonna give us the damn hood.
That's why I'm put. I'm a playmaker. I, I, I love it. I love to catch the ball. I love to go over people's head. Yeah. I do. University of Miami. They land you, and then they land the number one. We call him football player, number one player in the nation, James Williams. Yeah. Both playing the same position, right? How do you envision that working? Are they telling you how this don't work? Or? Uh, well, I feel like me and James two different safeties. Uh huh. And I'm more of the ball hogging safety. Uh huh. Strong safety. Right. That's going to build great position. And when the game comes, it's gonna be easy. Guess what's up? I know we go hand in hand because it's like like we the same person, right? Strengths and weaknesses, and I have my strengths. We gonna just talk for me, learn how to, I guess, more of the feet, and I can learn how to be more of like a close to the closer to the box safety. Right. So I feel like we just gonna make each other better. Yeah, James. James um play free safety. He wanted to play free safety, and he he was big on that. But James will never be back at free safety. <laughs> that's him playing for the team. I totally yeah. get I, I, nah, I did. I covered James. I don't know what it's like. I just feel like every time it's, it's just man on man. If if they wins, if he wins the battle, then that goes to play. He doesn't right. break on the run. Or if this person, like, doesn't take that step or certain certain things. It just I feel like you beat your man every play. After that, I just started going crazy. The yeah, the first play was like a tackle for loss, for like six. Yeah. Oh, they didn't touch you, like. <laughs> yeah, what, like they did. Explain to me, dog. Like, what what is that about? Like, how do they not? You six five, three hundred pounds. Is it something? Is a swim move? Is something you do? Like, they don't see you. You yeah. teleporting. What's I'm going on? Fast. I'm too fast for a long. They don't realize you that yeah. fast when the game starts. Like, I'm gonna be the best player on the field. Like, I just gotta show the world. Like, I'm the true. I'm the next fifty six. Oh, the next. I'm gonna just go crazy this year. Like show people like Wawa 56. Like show show them like I wanna take care of my mom. I wanna put in a big house, stupid cars, big pool in the backyard, put on for my brothers, my nieces and nephews, like coaches, I think all of them boys for like having me here at this like position that I'm in. like it's a hard vacation. What's good, man? I'm D. It's Friday. Ain't got no job. Ain't got nothing to do. And that's how I went. I messed that up big time, didn't I? What's good, man? I'm D, man. We about to talk about everything from Bitcoin to ball. We'll not be talking about FTX. We will not be talking about FTX. <laughs> everything from Bitcoin to ball. Um... First thing first, 7864-59499. If you want to be a part of IOD squad, invest or die. That's where we jump in and we trade. And today we had a live course for everybody who brought the course and a live, live Q&A for everybody who brought the course. And we trade, talk about NFTs, talk about crypto. There's a lot of information in there, man, um, to help you navigate through that stuff. Uh so just to text us seven eight six four five nine four nine nine. You want to get down with 
with that IOD squad, the link, uh, it's the link in the top. Hmm. The link is in there. So you're going to post a link. I'm going to pin the link at the top of the comment section. Y'all still going to ask me street where the link at. It never fails. You know what I'm saying? It never fails. It's still going to come and ask, hey, street, street, where, where the link is? Shoot me the link. Is in the top of the comment section of every video we make. It's the top of the comment section of every video we make. <laughs> and still people say, Street, where the link at, dog? But I understand. I get I'm here for y'all. I get it. I'm here for y'all. So, bam, what up? There's the link for the coming through. We're gonna pin it at the top. Bam, there it is. The video you was watching at the beginning, um, that'll be dropping in the member section. Uh, huh, that's kind of funny. That's, it was kind of funny because that video was shot. That video was shot two two days ago, a day ago. <laughs> And we're hearing now that South Florida will make a run at DVD. Um, <clears throat> haven't heard anything about, haven't heard from him or anything about he, what he plans to do. But we're hearing that South Florida will make a run at the Marcus Van Dyke coach DVD, uh, who's an analyst for the University of Miami. Um, he was on the field last year, had to take a step back this year. But South Florida will be offering him to be on the field. Um, and that could be a problem. Now, there ain't no way around it. It could be a problem. <laughs> There's no other way of, yeah, that, that could be a problem. DVD has his hands in a lot. Uh, well, for number one, I mean, number one recruit, Kamani McClain. Um, uh, a lot of that was riding on DVD. Um, and Mario, Mario, I mean, uh, and Mario. A lot of that's riding on me. Uh, and next year, Shamanas kids, a lot of those relationships are with DVD. It's just it's a lot of that. Uh, starting with Kamani and, and, and his relationship with his with his with his family, his mom. That's just a lot of uh, a lot of value there. Now the dilemma is, I mean, uh, to get a coach on the field, a coach has to leave, or a coach has to be fired, or, or somebody has something has to be shipped around. Um, I'm sure most coaches that are analysts that are want to move up in the coaching ranks, I mean, their goal is to get on the field. Eventually, um, sometimes you could be comfortable with doing it, and sometimes you can be uncomfortable and have to go do it somewhere else. So we'll see how that play out. Uh, even the, oh boy, the timing of this is, 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 is horrible with, with, with Kamani and, and Alabama visits being thrown around. If you're watching on uh, Twitter or Facebook, um, you're going to have to come over to YouTube. If you're sitting in, on YouTube, if you're sitting on YouTube, And you can't comment. It's because only the football builders can comment. Those are the members. Um, got access to the group me. We jump on here. Uh, we, we jump on here uh, and give them access first. And they can only comment until we get up to 70%. Once we get to 70% like we open up the comment section for everybody. Um, but the villains, they, they, they join, they pay monthly to get access to extra information. If you want to join the join button is there, or is right sitting on top of the comment section? I'm sure it is. It's a Friday night, man. I know what y'all thinking, man. Street don't do nothing, man. It's Friday night, man. He in here talking about DVD and transfer portal. Focus, man. <laughs> okay, what, Willie boss, what's going on, bro? Big, big Tooks, what's up? Focus, that's what you got going. Focus, I damn 
that's what we got going on, man. We focus, bro. So yeah, man, that's that's news. That's news for the night. Um whew. transfer portal. I mean that 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 has gotten a little crazy. Um <laughs> that's gotten a little crazy a little while. Uh you, you gotta you gotta have a staff in place, man. You, you for this, bro. Uh you have to have a staff in place for this. Uh it's 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 a lot, a lot of uh, roster management, um, keeping kids happy management. Um, <laughs> it's a lot going on right now. Uh, it's a lot going on right now. You say it's a lag? Wait up. Let me see. Where are we lagging at? Let's see. Boom. Let me check it. Let me let me see. Let me see what I look like. You see, I'm lagging. Let's see. Let, let me let me do a, ch- a quick check. Let me do a quick. No, no, it look okay. No, it look it look good, good, good now. Okay, good, 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 good. Cause I got Rich in the back, man. Rich be in the back. He got orange on. I don't be knowing if it's Clemson stuff or his Miami stuff. He be kind of hesitant to click in there. Bring Rich on. I'm bring Kyle on first, man. Make sure Rich get his stuff together. Oh no, Rich got a new hat, man. What up? What's uh, going on, man? You see the hat? Rich been on Amazon. You see the hat? He been on Amazon. Cal, Cali been on Amazon. You see him, man. He's trying to redeem himself, man. So he's gonna go get big gold letters. Hey, man, I see him. What you don't know is that that hat is reversible, Street. Like when he turned it on the inside, it's gonna have Clemson colors on the inside. It's gonna say Clemson on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh man. Nah, y'all see it. Don't hate. Where you got the hat? Don't dog? hate on me, man. When you picked up the hat, where you got the hat? Where the hat came from? I got it from when we went to the when I was at the Florida State Miami game. I got it from one of the vendors out there. Oh, so you've been had it? Yeah, I had it for a while. A couple months yeah. now. About a month. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Let me see, man. You gotta do some, let me do some technical work over here, bro. We ain't moving fast as I want us to move. Let's see what we got going on. Shout out to Derek Cornelius for becoming a YouTube member. That's what's up, That's bro. That's what's up. Because mm-hmm. we still shut down. I don't know what the rest of y'all waiting on. <laughs> the comments section is still shut down uh, till we get 70%. Uh, we were just talking about uh, South Florida pursuing DVD, man. I know DVD. DVD wanted to be on the field last year. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, when I say last year, I mean this this year. But coming in, he had to take a step back, and that was pretty. That was that was pretty uh, hard. That'd be hard for anybody. He had to get off the field. Um, maybe the money was the same, but he had to get off the field. Um, and now people are pursuing him for numerous reasons. Yeah, for re- recruiting. Mm-hmm. As well yeah, as I almost snatched him last year. Right. I guess he could tie himself to two All American freshman safeties. Getting on the field as freshmen. He, him and T Rob was instrumental in that. Um, but off the field, I mean, when it comes to the recruiting part, I, I mean, he's holding a lot. He's, he's holding a few gems in his hand. Uh, and I can see how South Florida can see the value in that. Um, I'm sure Mario does too. Who's the coach over at South Florida? Huh? Who's the coach over at South Florida? It just it just hired a new coach, right? Who 
Let's see. Alex Golish. That's the chat. That's the chat. Hey y'all, who who is uh South Florida new coach? <laughs> they know everything. It's Alex Go uh let me see. Alex Golish, first season. Let's see who Alex Golish is. He, he looked like the guy we was looking for last night. <laughs> That's what he looked like. He's been around, he's been coaching since 2003. <laughs> From Moscow, Russia. He do, dog. He looked like the dude we were looking for last night. Y'all think I'm joking. No, we know you're not joking. Did y'all find out who this guy was? Yeah, I think he was, he was, yeah. uh, play baseball in <laughs> Miami. Kyle something. Yeah, yeah he, does, he, he does. He does look like him. Actually. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, where y'all find all these gin, gingers from? That's the third one. <laughs> gingers, I, I know, man. <laughs> gingers. Um, no, but no, that's South Florida. Um, South Florida coach Alex Golis. Let's see. He's been coaching two thousand and three. Oh, he was a Tennessee uh, offensive coordinator. That's what last stop was. Ooh. Yeah. From this year, he was the Tennessee OC. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Oh wow. Damn. Yeah, so that might be fast, a nice huh? pickup. Mm-hmm. He did. He's just the head coach, or he's the OC and the head coach. He's he's the head coach. That's that's to be determined from what I see. Probably be a Jimbo type deal. He's the head coach, but you know. It's gonna be running his offense, right? See, but check this out. He coached OCs and tight ends at Tennessee, unless Wikipedia is lying. I see the, the same OC. thing. <laughs> he's OC and he's a tight. Wait up, let's see if we can find him on the page. He was the OC and the tight end coach, offensive the coordinator, and the tight ends coach. Hmm. So he didn't, he didn't touch quarterbacks and he didn't touch receivers. But did they have a quarterbacks guy? That's the thing. They might have a they might have a good guy for that. Maybe. Yeah. So it's not so it's not as uh unusual. Weird. Yeah, it's not as unusual as we thought. I mean well I thought. I mean let's see. It says officer coordinator and tight end. Damn, they don't took a picture down already. They said get on up out of here, dog. Hmm. <laughs> I think I think Miami coaching pitchers stay up there on their site, don't they? Uh-huh. It's a lot of people in the chat. It's a lot of people in the building today. What is 160 something? 186. A late Friday night. Yeah. That's what's up, though. DVD you said DVD. <laughs> <laughs> you tweet out DVD, maybe you know what I'm saying. Maybe being pursued mm-hmm. by somebody, like, I know you about to break some people's heart, man. That's Alex Goldish about to break. That's Ginger about to break people's heart. I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with that. Uh, yeah, I didn't have anything to do with that, man. I went to lunch with some cool people today. If you was in the group, me, man, you saw the pictures. Uh, one of them was Rumberg. We're going to see if we can get Rumberg to come on the show. Um, he still do radio? He does. I don't know if he does radio. I know he, they're trying to get a podcast. Uh, no, I don't know if he does radio. He told a man. He told a cool story about Corey Gaynor, dog, with a with a with a tragic U.M. ending. <laughs> wow. But he told a story about Corey Gaynor today, dog. That Corey Gaynor was basically being like pushed around, bullied when he first got here. Hmm. Um, and he said he pulled him around one day and told him, "Listen, it's gonna be four years of this if you don't if you don't stand up for yourself." Um, and he said from that day forward, Corey Gannon kind of like stood up, you know what I'm saying, for himself, came a captain. But for him to go to North Carolina, and that's why they probably they made a big deal of that in that locker room with him. Um, he right. goes to North Carolina, comes back and beat us. 
who like who who mirror did we break dog what black cat ran across you and Pam? <laughs> Like what is going on? Who stood in the who stood in the mirror and said, "Candyman, Candyman"? Where did the bad just, luck come from, dog? We got a lot this of is what happens. This is what happens when you don't have football people in football places. It's just that simple. Right. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, you you right. You're right, because you'll be surprised. I know when you guys talk about boosters and things of that nature, all those guys aren't football guys. Oh, we know. They're money people. <laughs> we know. Some of them are very passionate about the program, but some of them just people with money that want to help something. Got a couple hundred thousand sitting over here, man. I ain't y'all want it. <laughs> some of them just they, like they, that. They, they, a lot of them are no different from when, when – when Usher uh, gets a, a a third or whatever a thirteen percent ownership stake of Cleveland, you know he might not know nothing about basketball, but you know what I'm saying is he either want the opportunity or something he just want to support. Same thing with those boosters. This is their school. This is their alumni. You know what I'm saying. So they want to give or they want to help, but they don't know shit. They just want to either help or have their name on something. Right. Have their name on something. What is that about, Rich? We get into this with over. Why do people want their name on stuff, Rich? I mean, because it's a legacy thing. It's you know, especially if you if you love the program, you want to be attached to the program somehow. Of course, if you're over the age of 24, 25 years old, in some cases 26, 27, you're not suiting up for no college no more. So you you want to relive those glory days and you just and for a lot of guys, man, we work our ass off during the weekday. Um, we just want to have some leisure time and, and devote our, our time and energy to something that we that we love to do. So um, it really don't get the as far as the status is concerned, it don't get no higher than having your name on part of the building or, you know, part of whatever. So I think that's why, why people do it. It's like going to a car show with the nicest car and winning the first place trophy. Mm-hmm. But the it's trophy human nature. Shit. Yeah. It, the, the trophy it, it, it's human shit. nature, though. Yeah. <laughs> like know. um Trey Trey D said, uh Trey D says the 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 root of all evil is no longer money, it's attention. And so for some yeah. people. Yeah, so for some people, they want their name on stuff. They want their names to be out there, even though they got millions and billions of dollars. Like, why do you think Mark Cuban is so eccentric? This man got everything he need. But boy, when he went and got his team and got in that, that, that billionaire boys club, oh my gosh, Status. he made sure his face is everywhere, bro. Status. E- even when you talk mm-hmm. about dating, um, status comes before money. Mm-hmm. So if, if you like, because you see it all the time, a, a pastor, a preacher, they get donations. That's how they make their money. They don't like make money, but they got status. So, so mm-hmm. what you see? You see all them congregation women come lay your hands on me, pastor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened at your church, man. <laughs> it, it happened at a lot of churches, man. <laughs> so listen, man. It, 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 we're trying to get up to seventy percent likes, man, and we'll open up the comment section for everybody. So right now, just the villains in there. Um, Rich letting us in on a deep dog secrets at Baptist Tabernacle, <laughs> Antioch, New Birth. <laughs> letting us in on this deep dog secret, man. What's going on at his church? Um, yeah, but I, I, I guess, man. I, I guess. It, I, I I I guess, man. Um, you have enough money where you just want to put your name on the side of you and Carl Sofers indoor. Right. Yep. I guess. If y'all had the money, man, what, what would y'all put your name on the side of? Yeah, what, what, what you want to put your name on the side of, dog? Oh. My land. So everybody know not to come over there. That's it for me. 
<laughs> Where you put your money at, Rich? Clemson what? Cafeteria or what? <laughs> <laughs> he it right in the. He going right, right. Oh. He it right in the clips. Nah. So it's true hey. color. Dabble got a little something for you, Dabble. He gonna try to fix uh. clips in history. It ain't, it ain't gonna no longer be nigga here. It's gonna be richer here. <laughs> <Y'all just laughs> <be Richard>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Shout out Shoot. to Willie Boston man with the thirty dollars, man. We appreciate you. Uh, How y'all know about the- that? What'd you put your name on, dog? How, how y'all know about Negro Hill? That barbershop? That barbershop inside <laughs> Clemson uh, facility, football facility? Probably. Nah, I'm just messing hmm. with you. Nah, pro- my, probably my own land. You know. You can't say the same thing Cal said, man. But 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 different. It's but a different. podcast. I, you got to say something different. I probably do like a, a string of hotels or something like that. Have my name on it. Be like the Paris Hilton family or, or Trump, you know. Hey, hey, your, your shit is sound fancy too. The suit. How you say your last name, Rich? Souffrant. The Souffrant. I'm standing at the yeah. Souffrant tonight, baby. Telling you. The Souffrant. That sound expensive, boy. Sound like a sandwich. Telling you. <laughs> hey, 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 we got we we'll have the Souffrant souffle on the menu. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Tell him. Somebody, somebody said extended alumni and tax write-offs. Amar uh, Richards was there too, man. They were saying, um, it, it was taking questions from. Uh, it was only maybe twenty of us there. Anybody got any questions? I was trying to get Harry from All Kings to ask Amar what happened in the locker room at LSU. Hmm. <laughs> Amon don't even remember what happened in the locker room. I forgot that was a horrible time for Amon, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Amon was hurt. That started all the next stuff, right? Yeah. Jeff Thomas out there running around like a chicken with his head cut off and Rosier trying to find him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, did y'all see? Um, if, if anybody ain't watched the chat, man, um, they did a pivot with Clinton Porters. I um, saw the thumbnail. Yeah, it, it, it was yeah, good. He that. talked about it. He talked about his story and all that kind of stuff in the six months he did. But um, it got to a part where you know, of course, you got to start bringing up UM and all that stuff. And they were just going over the list of backs. And he was talking about the backs that was there when he came. It was like, dang, like he, he even made Ryan Clark them was like, God dang, like all them names and stuff. And they were like, man, you'll never see that again. That, that many names sitting behind each other, all that stuff. It was crazy, bro. Yeah, not sitting behind each other like that. They kind of don't have to anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Yeah. It, but I, he said, was, he, was, he was that he said that was the best thing. Uh, I watched it today, so I guess it did come out today. But he said that was the best thing for him. He said, he said he was standing. Um, he went to. Uh, I said he had went to like the the University of Florida. Went to one of their games. He's seeing all the names, uh, Javon Curse and all those guys and uh, everything, or whatever, right? And he said that Florida wanted him to play corner, so that's why he wasn't going to Florida. He said, but he was at a, I guess, a UM game or whatever. He said Adrian walked up to him and he was like, "Bro, you coming here?" He said, "Is you leaving?" <laughs> he said, if you leave it, I'm coming. <laughs> he said, bro, it don't matter if I'm leaving or not. He said, you shouldn't mm-hmm. want that. He said, you you want that competition. And he said, that was like <laughs> one of the greatest things that ever happened to him. He said, because when he got to the league, got into a stacked running back room, even when he went to Washington, stacked running room, he said he wasn't, he wasn't scared of none of that. He said he was ready to compete. He said, so all, that was the best thing to happen to him, to go in there with all that competition. Who was in the backfield with him? Oh, law. He he was around everybody at some point. So like when he came, I think right. Edge was Edge. Edge was leaving, right? But it was, right. it was it, Naze, James, um, McGay. He was under him. Gore was under him. He was saying that he said he said McGay. He was the dude that was in his ear, like pushing him, like trying to come for his spot. He said so all the while. McGay, he think he competing with me. He said I'm giving all my game to Frank Gore. He said, that's who you're going to have to compete with. I ain't, ain't, ain't going to let you compete with me. 
He said, I'm going to make sure Frank Gore good enough to take some of your, you know, to take your runs or whatever. And he was like, it wasn't that he didn't like McGahee or nothing like that. He said it was just competition. He said that's why, how we competed. He said we'll come out of these locker rooms and people be like, man, look at those guys. Man, those guys are all together. We said, man, people don't know. We just had a fist fight a couple of minutes <laughs> before we left out of here. He said, but all that stuff, that's what made us good. All that good competition. Frank was coming, boy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember, yeah, Frank went. Yeah. Frank still to this day, dog. I, when I sat on here, I spent a day with Frank. Um, still to this day, when he talk about McGahee, he talk about it like it's still competition. And he talk <laughs> about it like he talk about it like it put him, like it put him right back in there watching McGahee take snaps. <laughs> Him being mad, <laughs> like he still, he like he still got an edge on his shoulder about that shot, dog. <laughs> still, fool. Yeah. Man, I think them them guys, yeah. them four guys combined for who was it? it? Was it was it was Frank, uh, Edge, Porters, and McGahey. I think them four alone, they say, combined for over like forty four thousand yards in their career or something like that. Oh, wow. like, damn, damn, right. Najee had hundred yard games, and it's like you don't even remember them. Like when 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 Edge went for three hundred versus UCLA, Najee had like hundred yards. Hmm, he reminded me all the time. I talk to Najee all the time. He reminded me all the time. Like he he had some games, and it's like it was so many of them. You don't even kind of remember. You know what I'm saying? Some of the games, some of the games yeah. Frank had too. I, I can't remember. Like Frank had some big games too, but. You, you, what you got to love about that is that when you got guys ahead of you like that, you can't be one dimensional. You can't just, Hey, look, I can run the ball. No, no, you can't be whatever it is you do. Well, cause Najee kind of did a, li- a little bit of everything. He blocked, played fullback, caught the ball out of the backfield. Cause back in those days, you used to throw the ball to the fullback a lot. And then, you know, you follow that up with Quadrain Hill, who also did the same thing. And everybody did something different. Portis ran different. McGahee ran different. Um, You you just had had to be – you had – whatever it is that you did well, you had to, like, go out there and make it happen on the field. So that's what happens when you have a stacked room. I Even think that's he, what development is. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. who develops each other. I think the competition develops. Um, I think they develop each other. Yeah, you, you yep. can't say, Oh, I don't know how to I don't know how to block. Well, your ass ain't gonna play. <laughs> it's that mm-hmm. simple. Hey, yeah, we street. Don't have to put up with that shit. Man, them guys say, and this is like the I know you've said it, and this is like I hear this all the time. But Fred T, he called Edge. He was like, he called Edge his little big brother, right? He's like, Edge is like the wisest guy he knows. And Porter said the same thing. Everybody talks about like how wise and how smart like uh, Edge is, bro. Mm-hmm. I've heard that from so many people now. You, even Peyton Manning says that. Peyton's like, that dude, he's just different. If y'all haven't checked out my um, interview with Edge and James, um, oh, Go check it out. Uh, oh, my camera just went dead, huh? Go check it out. My in my interview with Edge, I talk about. Um, uh, he talks about it. I asked him. That's one thing I wanted to know. I wanted to know where did that come from? You from Immokalee? <laughs> like, yeah, like, like, how are you the most savvy dude in the room? And he said, man, when I got to UM, all I wanted to do was business because he saw his granddad and his grandma, they had a farm and they ran a business. As simple Mm -hmm. as that. As simple as that. So think about that. Whatever your mom and your dad do, they, yeah, you got to go down that road. (laughs) (laughs) As simple as that, bro. He lived with his grandma and his grandma and his dad. Had a business, they had employees, they had a farm, and he wanted to do business. Mm-hmm. So I've been shooting street of hub. Oh, Chris Young, you know, had a couple <laughs> shots of that, of that hand dog, you know what I'm saying? 
but yeah. Um, so if y'all haven't checked out my interview, bro, um, I should have pulled up a little bit now and let y'all watch it while I switch my cameras. Uh, go check out the interview, man. <laughs> interview Edwin James, three o'clock in the morning at his club. Um, then got up seven o'clock to go drive back to Miami from Orlando to interview Sean Spence. Um, but us, even us interviewing Edwin James, me and Twan will tell you the story one day. We'll tell the story right now how we had to track this motherfucker down like he's a CIA or something. Like it was hard, though. <laughs> That's how it ended up being three o'clock in the morning. It was like, all right, fuck it. Got to go, got to go. Twan couldn't be there. I had to use it. I had my cousin. That's why I look a little different. It was hard. You know what I'm saying? It was hard tracking him down. You, you ain't going to catch him slipping. Mm-hmm. It was a good interview, though. Uh, camera wise well, and everything, it was great. It was a great interview. No, nah, no, nah, he because there was just, just a few things I wanted, I needed from him, man. Is is some things I didn't understand. Like if I ever got a chance to talk to LeBron, like he would have to un, like explain like his business savvy and how where did it come from, um, pulling the people around him. And Edge kind of has some of the same tricks when it comes to that stuff. Uh, we was at his club. Um. This is when the, the the Hall of Fame dunk was being made. We asked him a hundred times for the dunk be there. <laughs> he never answered mm-hmm. us. <laughs> uh-huh. But we understand why, because he was going to unveil it when he, he he was just about to go through to be um, inducted into the Hall of Fame, like maybe a week later. Right. And that's mm-hmm. when he unveiled it. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I respect. I just we talk. I I hit him up anytime now. We talk, man. Um, nothing but respect there. But go check that out, bro. Um, you check that out, that interview out. Um, we may cut up some pieces of it, man, and drop some more of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when I asked him about rushing for 300 versus UCLA, he didn't say it like it was a big deal. He said, like, listen, if I could have got 20 carries, 30 carries, in any other game, I would have rushed for 300. That's how he felt about it. Hmm. Port, so Porter, Porter said that Edge would, like, say – all right, I'm gonna get uh, see, I'm gonna get this. See, I'm gonna have six carries for like 53 yards by the end of the first or whatever. Like, he would map out play by play. Like, I'm gonna okay, so I know Marvin gonna stretch the man out this way, so I should be able to pop like 10 off this. And Fred Taylor jumped in and said, Dog, that's just how he is. He said, We was just talking about that's just how that man is. I'm like, Bruh, that man, yeah. is, that man on something yeah. else, boy. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up, man. I, I heard they talk about him the same way. Go ahead. I was about to say I, I heard when uh, Portis got his his big contract and how he knew he knew when he was going to get it. He knew the game that was going to put him over the top to get it. And sure enough, he had a great game. And yeah, he he's always been that guy to map out what he's what he about to go do. So. I'm finna sell this story and then y'all gonna have to hold it down while I switch my cameras. But I remember Najee yeah. telling me we was getting frustrated, dog, chasing down Edge. We was getting frustrated. And I remember asking Naj, Najee, I was like, dog, listen, man, we've been trying to, we've been talking to Edge and talking to him, you know what I'm saying? But got it's all everything is on his time. It's kind of hard to track him down. Like, dog, what could we do? Najee said, he talking to you? I said, Yeah, he talking to you. <laughs> He said, "Well, you straight did." <laughs> uh. <laughs> I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> said, uh. Yeah, dog. Sometimes you got to get brought back to earth like that. Mm. He was like, "Man, he just like that." Man, he said, "That's how he moved." He taught all of us how to move. He moved. You know what I'm saying? That was that was that was that was. He was like, "He talking to you?" I was like, "Yeah, he talking to me." But he said, "Man, nah." If you're talking to you, then that means you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so I guess all of them. Look. Switch my camera, man. Y'all hold it down for a second, all right? Yeah. Y'all need to talk. Nah, to I was gonna say. Uh, okay, right. we got it, bro. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, Rich. Um, he probably he must have taught all of them boys because you know what? All those guys move like that. The only one that's like kind of flamboyant was like Clinton Porter's. Yeah. Um. And, I mean, he's not a Florida kid, so maybe that's what it is. But um, all those guys move like that. All of them quiet. Like, I haven't heard Najee speak in I don't know how long. Every time I hear something from Najee, it's coming from street of mouth. Except for, well, Najee came to the, he was in the Discord, like, um, a long time ago. He was in the Discord. We was talking ago. about, like, 
You're right. NFT. So you don't hear from him. Everybody kind of move in silent, just do their handle their business and stuff. Yeah, and that's the way it should be. You can't you can't let everybody get access to you all the time. You really can't. Mm-hmm. Um it is what it is. <sighs> That's why they have to. They, they they need to do a. That's why they they always needed to do a better job at UM of making sure these guys come back and be in the hallways. You know what I'm saying? Coming and talking to the kids, getting on staff because these guys have been there. They've done that. They somebody the kids are gonna look up to, and they can teach these kids how to keep a low pro- profile and just amongst other things. You know what I'm saying? That's outside of football, but of course they can teach them some football. So I, I don't. UM is so in its own way. It's not even funny. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. That's a great, great way to put it. They're definitely in their own way, for sure. For yeah, sure. For a long time. Very long time. Yeah, so, uh, King David was saying Santana Moss. You don't really hear from him. Most of the guy, Dre. I mean, some of those guys, it may be natural. Like, Dre may be just right. naturally quiet, but you don't never really hear Dre talking. Um, most of the guys are like that. They don't really, you know. I guess Ray Lewis couldn't help but be in the spotlight, but you know, our guys, as, as, as great as they are, they're not very flamboyant. You know what I mean? Nah. You you kind of you you accomplish what a lot of people are trying to accomplish with their life. So it, I mean, what else do you got to say? I mean, right. you can go run it up. You can go be an employee again and and go that route and try to capture all the TV money and all that stuff. But I mean, for the most part, if, if you, if you stay low key and you keep a low profile, you're not throwing up $30,000 at a, at a strip club every other night and stupid stuff like that, you should be straight with, from a money perspective. So Mm -hmm. you really ain't got to answer to nobody. Yeah, it's the opposite of what we was talking about earlier when we talk about these billionaires and they want to have their name on everything or try to get their name on something. And like you say, these boys know their accomplishment. They've done their account. They're accomplished. So I don't need to be everywhere. I need to have my face everywhere. I don't know. There's a lot of people that don't reach that kind of maturity. Well, I tell you what, though. So when you talk about a billionaire wanting to have his face everywhere. It's not only it's not just them wanting to have their face everywhere from a tax perspective. You got to remember that you have to have if if you don't spend the money, you basically lose the money because you're going to have to pay it in taxes. So now I, I'd rather go make an endowment and give somebody one hundred million dollars than having to give the IRS one hundred million dollars. So that's mm-hmm. that's part of that, too. But when you made a couple million, let's say you got ten million in the bank and you're living off the interest, you you kind of you kind of don't have to do that. Maybe you make a ten thousand dollar donation here and there, but you know, other than that, you just lay low and, and live your life. You know, making your you know five hundred thousand to a million dollars a year off of the interest and keep, keep it moving, keep it pushing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Y'all, y'all, y'all make a good point. Uh, Quan said the flamboyant guys were the eighty, the eighties and the early nineties guys. And Chris Young was just pointing that out. He was like playmaker, Ray Lewis, Rohan. You're right. Those earlier guys were a little bit more, you know, a little bit more in your face and all that stuff. They were. But but the money, the funny part is the money was was different back then. So. As to the time went on, the money got got better. So, imagine what them boys would have been able to do with with twenty million dollar contracts. Oh, Ima- lot of imagine, boys if not Michael, made it. <laughs> imagine if mm-hmm. Michael Irvin got like an eighty million dollar contract. Mm, boy, <laughs> not better. You heard what Luke said? I I I asked Luke in the space a long time ago. I say, um, I base. I think it was in the space. He might have been here, but I asked him who was his favorite players to be around, his favorite guys to go hang out, whatever. Luke said, I wasn't there to hang out with them. He said, I was there to save them guys. Right. <laughs> so imagine if them boys had NIL money and all. <laughs> Listen, man, I know, bro, because I trust me. I know all the – I heard all the stories and know all the stories. A lot of them cats, boy, and – 
Someone yeah, that would have been, been a good look. <laughs> Some some of them would have been the biggest dope dealers in Miami. And you said it. You said it right there, boy. There's so many indictments and <laughs> fraud and all that shit. <laughs> like, we about to nah, run it up. Run it up, bro. But nah, Chris is Chris is right, bro. We had a we had a good mixture, man. Um it's just weird, man, that people don't this is what I was saying. When you don't have football people in football places, you don't know how to adopt the culture and keep it. You know what I'm saying? Or even if right. it's even if it's or even if it's organic, you know, it's something people wanted to create what we had at Miami, and we just strayed away from it. And it's we just, did. It's, it's stupid. It's sad. It's, no it's, it's sad. Yeah. It makes because everybody want to be the swagged out hurricane. You know, the swagged out hurricanes that do whatever they want to do. And so here's a good question talking about swag. We don't have no swag on this team, this past team. Do you think that it was it was wrong to do away with the turnover chain? Ooh, well, that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna put it like this. I, I was always against doing away with the turnover chain because it was it, it was it was fun. Let the kids have fun, right? I just don't I don't yep. think it would have made a difference for us this year because things around there was so I think it was just so heavy around there. I don't think the chain would have made a difference this year. But I thought it was a part of us that we should have embraced, even though I understood why Mario did it. But I don't know. I think that chain got too much blame, personally. Yeah, I, I think it was a lot of blame associated with what we had going on on the field and I just I just personally think that we did start that tradition and we even see the number one team in the nation Georgia they got their version of their turnover whatever right Mm -hmm. and once again it's another example of people trying to copy our swag but we just don't know how to hold on to it Right. <laughs> so we don't know how to make turn swag into tradition. But see that that was the thing. You should have like and, and not just the not just the swag and the chain. When I'm talking about culture and the things we do, like you're hundred percent right. But I'm, when we talk about the culture and the things we do, the way you would have kept that going is you would have just made sure all these guys were always hitting the off seniors and training and coming back. Warren Sapp. Jeremy Shockey, uh, uh, Michael Ert, whoever, Andre Johnson. And then you got Bane right here saying, you know, they want us on the walls, but not in the halls. Like, that should never be. That doesn't make any sense. And that's how you lose what you want. But when you have people that are not football people, they don't care. They all concerned about you health and all that kind of stuff. Like, you can't do two things at once. You know what I mean? Right. That's true. Shout out, shout out to Brandon Robinson. Um, could you imagine that chain coming out in, in the fourth quarter at Middle Tennessee when we losing though? Yeah. Well, see, that's different. That's a <laughs> that's a that's a many issue. Like, I, I don't I don't even understand how that's even a question. Like, how do you let the chain come out in a lo- like, bro? What are y'all doing? <laughs> that, that, that was on Manny, like, Manny and the coach. Like, you thought they, you thought they uh, had some built-in bylaws, Cal? You thought they had some articles that, or like some built-in? I, I, I thought I thought common sense was built in. Like we ain't taking that chain out. We get my ass beat. What are you doing? Right. And, you and, with some rules. I would have been, <laughs> so, would have been so embarrassed if I got a pick. We losing thirty-four-seven, and I get a pick. And they come and try to give me a job. I'd have been so embarrassed, bro. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm not taking no picture of that damn chain. Cam, I don't want nobody to move out. Cam what? Cam would Cam was. It was Cam, huh? It was Cam that that, I, that I put it on like mm, mm, mm. I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have no. felt so stupid. So we needed a chain owner association. We needed somebody to govern the chain. Like the chain needed some. Yeah, dog. They didn't think I'm it bottles. through. They didn't think it through, no. but it took so long for the, for that to happen. But do you need laws for that? That ain't common sense. I, I I can imagine Randy, and I wasn't a fan of Randy Shannon, but I can imagine Randy Shannon turning around and cussing everybody out about that damn chain. <laughs> but Cal, damn laws. 
Cal, the chain, the chain, like I tell you, when they would give us our stat sheets before the media stat sheet, the chain was on the stat sheet. So, so it, it's almost like, so what you would have just awarded the kid the chain and just not physically did it, basically? I mean, I wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been on the stat sheet in the first place. That's, and that's what I think happened. I think it became too important. Yeah, we had everybody who ever had the chain, how many times they had it, uh, the games they had. Yeah, it became part of the stats. <laughs> that is kind of weird. Really you think Florida State bo- pocketbook was a part of their stats? That is kind of weird we let it get that far. <laughs> huh? I saw what's the name dunking the ball the other day. Who the fuck was dunking the ball? Pitt. They had a little basketball goal and they dunked it. Boom. You think that's you know, on their stat sheet? Nope. Mm. It. And but I, that's the I, thing. I, I like, know UGA at... had those shoulder pads for a long time. I know they did, but it just we just made it swagged out to have some. But why can why, why can UGA win and be focused and still have props and we can't? You know what I'm saying? That's a whole coach thing. It ain't, that's why I said we pointed at the chain way too much. That was just like, I am. Yeah, yeah and it wasn't the chain. It was it was the <laughs> the personnel. Mm-hmm. When the chain was created, were we winning? Yeah, yeah, was? that was Rick, right? That was was the seventeen yeah, the chain came out. Yeah, that was that ten win season. Oh wow, that's oh, it was yo, perfect. That's it. Was, you telling me, fool? Like I used to be on the sideline <laughs> 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 when the chain about to come out, and all the all the all the cameramen would run to the to the to the to the. To the uh, to the back of the um to the side of you on side and they were yeah though it was epic though it was it was it was a good time it was it was a good thing at the time and we had, I mean, the we first had time they put it out every year it was a big deal like oh we gotta see the chain what is it oh it's a boat with a naked yeah. girl yeah oh it's a yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a flamingo what Dog, we we hadn't had that in so long. We didn't have that kind of excitement and enjoyment from a game in so long, dog. It was just like a perfect time, bro. Mm Mm-hmm. It was like giving a a man in the desert water. But you see how history works? Like, in five more years, Rich, those are our NFTs, bro. Telling you. All those videos I got, it'll change. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Because... I don't think it's coming back. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't see. I don't see too many months of Mario. I don't see this guy. It is not coming back. Right. No, it's not. Not, not. It will not. Mm. Unless Mario slip and bump his head and wake up somebody different, it ain't coming back. I, don't know, I was a fan of the chain. I, I I saw nothing wrong with it becoming a long a long standing tradition, like at all. I, I didn't see nothing wrong with that at all, bro. It would have been a rough one this year, though, dog. That's, yeah, I know. Well, Cam would have had that bit by six times. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> all right, we're gonna open up the chat. Uh-oh. The inmates are free. The inmates are free. No, with Cam on that intro, with Cam sit down and Cam be like, "Well, I envision it happen that we two different, we two different safeties. We do, we two different safeties. I figure I'm a, a more free safety, and James is more in the box. We could teach each other." When he was saying it, when he was saying that, right? Was y'all looking at him like, oh, "Who the hell you think?" Or, or when he said that, it made you think that God damn, he confident. It depends on if you ever saw him play football, right? For me, it was neither. I was like just listening. I was like, okay, yeah, you're right. It was neither. Like I didn't think he was overconfident because I saw him play, and I was excited. Like he's right. Yeah, they both gonna get back there and play. So right. every time I hear that dog, it's like, man, this man was so sure. Like he's so sure of himself. Yeah, because he wasn't bragging or nothing. He was just, it's like he had a game plan in his head already. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, I still envision it being like that. Um, 
They gotta yeah. figure out. They gotta figure out what they're gonna do properly with James. I, I just don't think it, it's up to James too. James has to do more, even though he's not is what everybody bashing him for. He has to do more because he can. Uh, mm-hmm. But we also gotta use him better, use him in different ways, and just the, the defense around him has to get better. But he has to let some things sink into his brain as well. Um, so I still envision it. I think it's gonna be nice. And I think I think they gotta have the mindset that we got each other's back, no matter what. I saw that that it was a Twitter post of the linebackers at UGA, and the one linebacker basically whiffed on a play, and the captain, who was the other linebacker, turned back at him and was like, "What the fuck you doing, bro?" Like what? What you do? Like right there on the field, and he responded by getting a sack in the next play. We gotta have that. We gotta really have each other's back. Because I, I think that's what James is looking for. I almost feel like if James saw that, he would play better himself. Somebody has to be an alpha, though. Somebody has to be an alpha to do that. People always look for James to be the leader because he's a five star. But I believe that if he saw that around him, if he was in an environment where people was like that, you would have no choice. But he and that and that's that's what we go back to. We start talking about culture, right? That's how it was supposed to be when he got here. But we saw what went on with Bubba and with Gervin them. And you also saw I, I love going back to this play. When um, they threw that screen to Rambo, Navon didn't get out there and block, and he went in on Navon. And all you right. heard was people saying, "No, that's not how you supposed to be showing up a teammate." And I'm just like, "No, bro, that's what he's supposed to do." Right. So you think right. about the culture that James walked into. There was not that ki- that that kind of accountability was not allowed. And nor was it being shown on the defense. What you thought you'd get that from a Bubba Bolden, and but you could just see it. it and I'm not blaming Bubba. It's just the kind of culture I feel like many had around there. You know what I'm saying? And think about it. Like we know what happened with Bubba coming down and shutting it down, or at least we think we know. You know what I'm saying? So he just he just walked into he walked into a spot where I'm immediately the guy. And when you don't have that type of alpha maturity, that's a bad thing. There's certain guys that can be that, right? Like, let's just say if Corey Flagg had all the athletic ability in the world, I believe he's the type of guy that could walk into a locker room as a freshman and, and demand things because he knows he, he knows how to carry himself. He knows the game, all that kind of stuff, right? It's hard to be that guy when you can't play like that guy. You know what I'm saying? James didn't have nobody to walk in and – he, he had nobody to listen to, nobody to, you know. It, so you, you have what you have, trying to figure it out on your own now. Hmm. Who was the safety here when Jane got here? Gervin Hall and Bubba Bowden? Yep. Hmm. And missed the lead with your head. Early. Yeah, both, and, uh, Carter, yeah, and they all tapped out early when Carter had no moved up the striker, but. Gervin tapped out early. Bubba tapped out early. It was just them two boys thrown into the fire. Did Gervin play? Um, um, Gervin played this year for for um Packy. Not Packy. Uh, Banda. Banda. Yeah. He did. Uh, that's where he went to Utah State. I don't know what is it. Did. Utah State. Let's go look and see. Yeah. Utah State football. Let's see. Utah State. Real, 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 real quick, too, because I'm seeing it in the chat. <laughs> um, how about Hyatt, that, that uh, receiver, getting the NIL deal from Hyatt Hotels? Oh, did he? Wow, yeah, nice. man. Some say it's like for eight hundred thousand dollars a year. 
What? Mm-hmm. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> It's more That's money that, I, that he I, would get in the draft. I I like seeing kids get there. Not that I look. I don't care how they get their nils. Don't get me wrong, but I like seeing them get their nils that way because that means they're really expanding their brands and things like that, or somebody's paying attention. And, you know, they're really learning branding for real, man. I like that. Right, just like the coldest. You know, what did he get? I saw that commercial. The coldest. Uh uh-uh. uh. What did he get? Coldest. He got AC. AC commercial. <laughs> I like that. The coldest. <laughs> you know he's from the South. Gervin Hall had 23 solo tackles. An interception. See how many games he played. He had what? 23 solo tackles and one interception. The whole season? He only played in seven <laughs> games. He only played in seven games. Yeah, they're rich. <laughs> whole season. <laughs> mm-hmm. Looked like he only played in seven games. He played October the 20th. Yeah, it looked like he started late or something. He played in October. He started playing in October. Oh no, that was his last game he played. Maybe he got hurt. Quote unquote. Yeah, maybe he got hurt. He had a lower extremity Three, injury. Four, five. So he had seven. He only played in seven games. Did anybody else go over there? Go to Utah State? I, I thought somebody else did. Who else went over there? Let me see. Like I'm, 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 like I'm, I'm really hoping a lot of our guys go over there to SMU with Lashley. Even though I'm not a Lashley fan, but I really hope a lot of them go over there, man, with Lashley. Rooster, Rooster, going is that? Is he going? I hope so. Well, I don't I know. Lashley that. might get him killed. Oh, I have to think twice about that. Well, Lashley might get that man killed. What? You, what you saw? What you saw, Rich? I saw somebody in the chat. Of course, they they had. I guess Rooster landed in Dallas, and Gilbert Firesen too, right? You went over there. I saw his. I saw his feet in Dallas too. I thought. Oh, okay. That was Gilbert Firesen. Okay. But Rooster. Somebody said something about Rooster before Gilbert Firesen. Okay. I I thought I wasn't because I knew his his his, uh, his IG has four in it, right? That's his number. Uh-huh. Yeah, I saw I saw a rooster. Uh, let, me, let me go get in the chat. I need to go uh, put Smooth on mute. Come here with that road tie. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> What's up, Smooth? <laughs> Brandon Took say, uh, only thing Cam success this year had nothing to do with James. Cam been a star. Um, to be honest, James Williams looks like his IQ on the field slow. He always lost in the coverage. Yeah, I'm not getting into that. I guess that's not even worth talking about. <laughs> Lastly, offering them going the line back on the studio one live. I hate to say it, that made me. Who, who echoing like that? I think that's feedback, you know. I'm going to mute my mic real quick. Oh, I can't tell if somebody echoing. Is it me? It's, I think it's feedback. Yeah, because I hear myself when I talk. I can hear myself from one of y'all backgrounds. I think it's you. Me? I think so. <clears throat> I, think so. I ain't got nothing else on. Oh, yeah, stop. <laughs> it's Cal. Cal the culprit. <clears throat> Rich time he gonna mute his mic. He don't win and fell asleep. Nah, man. <laughs> nah, I was waiting waiting to see, you know, if we figured it out. <clears throat> but you can actually see it. Like you can see the sound moving when y'all when y'all talk. Yep. Sound like it's feedback, Cal. <clears throat> but yeah, Gervin Hall did play. The whole season. Still, can, y'all, can y'all still hear it? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Let me go and come back. Uh, I'll go and come back. Okay, then. All right, now see if I can fix your mic and come again. So, so I, I saw I saw earlier in the group me that we're supposed to be getting three people this weekend. What? Or, or is it just three visitors this weekend? I think they were visiting, right? Yeah, my goal's brother is visiting. Um, Chris Johnson and one other guy. Somebody say put the link to be a member in the chat street. It's right down there in the description. Um, but I'll put it right here. <clears throat> Who the three dudes was? <coughs> uh Chris Johnson, my Goa, and um and I that's my, the third guy. That's Francis' brother, right? Yeah. Chris Johnson. Um Chris Johnson on uh Seven oh, McGee. Seven, seven McGee, yep. My little dude, um, I interviewed Seven McGee right before he went to um, Oregon. Chris Johnson, maybe on commit watch. I like little Chris, though. Chris make plays. Yep. Fast. So oh, y'all just, if y'all just getting here, what's up? The Alabama lineman. What's his name? Uh, Cohen. Cohen. That's more than three people, ain't it? Yeah, it's four. So if y'all just getting in here, bro, um, we, st- we started off with DVD. South Florida is trying to pursue DVD for obvious reasons, and what they can lure him with is being on the field, um, trying to lock him down as a DB coach. Um, even having even even having a report that is a problem. <laughs> Uh, because how much is riding on uh DVD and what his ties in the Kamani McLean and and uh some of our kids next year. Um, but it is what it is, man. People have to do what's best for them, I mean, and your family, what was best for your career. Um, but yeah, so that's how that's how we started. Cohen. Yeah, I don't think just because the kids tour that, that means they're gonna commit. I mean, I'm right there with you. They just going up, up to see what, what Miami's offering. But the one thing it's almost like JUCO. A JUCO kid doesn't take five visits like that. They may take two or three visits and make a decision. So if if nobody commits this weekend, mm-hmm. I know that we're in the we're in the top two or three for all of these kids that's coming that we do know right Mm -hmm. so so that's that's always a great thing too cal say something am i good am i good yeah Yeah. man what you sitting in the car now no i I put my headphones on i I took them off because it'd be they'd be lagging so much and so that's why it probably started echoing so i just put them back on Y'all see them people yelling for Dion at the basketball game the other night, man? Yeah, man. <laughs> Prime time. <laughs> oh, wait, Street. Did you talk about, not to change subject, but did you talk about the New Mexico kid basketball player? No. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. What's crazy about it is the, the way they reported the story is what's bothering me. Um, you know the story, Street, about the basketball player that got shot? Yeah, he almost got robbed, right? He shot and killed somebody, right? Somebody right. tried to kill him yeah, or he, something? He was, he was set up by by a girl. A girl, right? Yeah. Uh, he, I guess he was, he was coming. You know you know how players do. They come into a town. He, he met this girl on what? Tinder. <laughs> and apparently the girl, was, the, the girl was underage, too. She was 17. She was a student. That's what I'm bothered yeah. by because they keep the, the first thing they keep saying is she's a 17 year old girl. That's all they keep putting out there. And then when you get into the story, they'll mention that she was a she's a student of the of the college. I'm like y'all right. stop trying like that shit bothers me, bro. And and the big the headline for him for the basketball player is he's suspended indefinitely. And you look at what was what transpired because you could see the video. They will. They clearly shot at him first, 
he just man, if he didn't have a gun on him, that man would have probably died that night. He would have died. Mm-hmm. He was running. He was running. <laughs> they 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 ran up on him. They uh, one of them, I think one of them hit him hit him in the leg with a bat, and um and the other one struck him, and he was trying to like kind of like run away. And the other dude was pointing the gun at him, whatever. And he shot. He shot him in the leg. And he pulled out his. Well, I don't know if he pulled out his gun first and didn't do fire. But I know the dude. The dude shot him in the leg, and he pulled out his gun. And he killed the dude. And two dudes yeah. ran off. And it's just like he didn't. He didn't do anything. Like I guess unless you can get him for curfew or maybe having a gun on campus. But um, yeah, like uh, Scar Breeze said somebody said um she lied she had to lie about her age because you have to be 18 to be on tinder to have a tinder account not, not necessarily. And so, but re- even if she i don't know that's what they saying i don't know but regardless she's a student like they're both yeah, college students student. but you're gonna t- like what are, yeah. what are you gonna tell them but that's the whole headline um new uh such and such basketball player uh, attempted robbery. He was with a 17 year old girl, and that, like that was the first headline I saw. And of course, I saw. I was like, "Why the hell was he with a 17 year old girl? Who was this girl?" Yeah. Then when you get into it, you see she's a steward. But you know, that's the headline they put out there first. I'm like, "Come on, man, y'all have to stop." Yeah, this crap. I, I saw, I saw a player was getting suspended indefinitely, and I was like, "Oh damn, what, what happened now?" And it isn't until you like start to actually read it, and you're like, "Man, come on now, this guy was defending himself." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean all of this, Cal. I mean, you, you look at all of this. Um, I was pulling it up now. Um this this is crazy. New Mexico kid linked to linked to shooting had prior felony. Police <laughs> serve New Mexico State search warrants in the house before a battle. New Mexico State. Wow, man. New Mexico State basketball player Anthony Roy on probation from 2021. That's what they're saying about him. He almost got killed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. First thing I saw, seventeen year old girl. I'm like, come y'all are killing me so, with this mess, so, bro. So like, here's a question. So the one one guy died. Now, um you got two other guys who they can clearly identify, and then the girl they can clearly identify. So what are you gonna give uh, I hope they charge those three. I think they charge I was reading it. I think they charged the girl already. I think. Um, I don't know about the other two guys. I don't know if they caught them. I don't know if they caught the guys that ran. Well, they, well, they they got to know who they are because it's it's plain as yeah. it, it was nighttime. But you know that plain girl gonna talk. You know that don't matter. You know that girl finna talk anyway. <laughs> don't even matter. <laughs> shout out to Depot three hundred five becoming a member, man. And shout out to Tooks with the twenty dollars Tooks A Street. You think Miami go out to Christian Leary? Well, let's ask him. How about that? <laughs> Let's ask him live. He on the ground. <laughs> no, man, this is this is this is this is this is trash, man. Huh? Huh? huh. We're we gonna watch this. Let's see. Gun, phone, and tablet from the scene has a criminal past. Here's John Cardinal. He has a criminal past. And, uh, this NMSU guard, Anthony Roy, transferred this year to the university from a community college in Idaho. While he was playing there, uh-huh. he picked up a felony conviction. What? Didn't the man almost get killed? Yeah. Right. Right. Because that was but two hours. Ago. This is two hours ago. They're making it seem as if he was he, he was supposed to get set up by this girl. And... Target 7 was able to obtain from the state of Idaho. It shows that Anthony Roy, an NMSU guard, was convicted for felony drug dealing charges last October. So... This was so much that the local DA charged him with a possession with intent to distribute. He got convicted. He... Following Roy's conviction on August 22nd of this year, while Roy was attending NMSU, he agreed to these parole conditions. He received a suspended sentence, didn't do any prison time. Two of those conditions, as seen here, show Roy agreed to following curfew restrictions, as well as agreeing to not purchase, carry. As Target 7 was able to discover, Roy was one of the three NMSU players police say were seen on the night of the deadly shooting, pulling up to UNM. Oh, Lord, they still, don't they know the story by now? 
Yeah, they do. But you know what? They about to lock that brother up. They got him. For self-defense. What? They about to lock him up. He's a he's a basketball player. Another another black guy not 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 seen reaching his potential. They about to lock that. him up. Maybe they reported this a few days ago. What's today's date? <laughs> well, it's the ninth. That was today. So they're yeah. still reporting it like he had a gun and he shot somebody. You about to lock that brother Vince up. Campus in this yellow Camaro, receiving what state police believe to be Peek's phone, tablet, and gun following the shooting. The items were placed in the trunk of the car. The minute you touch that firearm and move it from one location to the other or, or conceal it or, or whatever the case may be, um, you know, you're, you're possessing it. It is a federal crime for a convicted felon to have a firearm in their possession. State police video obtained by Target 7 shows the gun may have been in his possession, according to NMSU assistant coach Dominique Taylor. I'm in Monica, Avery, and Roy, so I don't know which one. We've not been able to determine what investigators wanted to seize from him. How you doing, sir? Are you Mr. Anthony Roy? No? We reached out to NMSU officials about Roy's prior felony conviction. In an email, they told us they were Footpath, a NCAA rules expert. He says it's up to each university to decide if they want a prior felon playing on their team. But I think New Mexico if those reasons were because of his prior felony conviction. For Target 7... You know, the weird part so, is he's already uh, on the team. I got, I, I'm going to... I, I, I want to find there. I'm going to find that station's Twitter... And I want to put some shit out there. And I'm hoping everybody else does the same because this is some bullshit. Like, this is the story that y'all want to report. You want to talk about this man having a previous felon and like, so what? A felons are not allowed to continue living? Like, all that stuff is over. And he's at another school trying to do his, trying to, you know, make his life. And this is what y'all want to report on? That's crazy. Y'all don't want to report on the girl or the dude that got shot or the lack of security around that place. This is what y'all want to report on? Oh, Man, I really want y'all to take notice of what they do to our kids, bro. Hack your daddy have a, have a field day with them people. Right. <laughs> like, listen, police serve New Mexico State search warrants in hours before battle. Yeah, it's almost like they just want to talk about... So so where is this the real story at? The story that, you know what I'm saying? Where did y'all hey, see street, the street. You know what I'm, I'm, I'm wondering? Hold on. Is that the... To shoot in my state, please. Was he the kid? Is he the kid that got shot, or is this one of the teammates that they're talking about? It's him. Uh, that's, that's him. He's the one that's who shot. Him? Who shot? Yeah, there's a picture of him right there. Cause oh. this is the picture I saw yesterday. Yeah, he's the one who shot somebody in self defense. Oh, I thought his name was like Mike something. Let me see. Oh, he is the shooter, Chris. Okay, because I thought I thought his name was I thought the shooter's name was like Mike right. something. Let's well, let's he, be real too. Let's let's be real. I think that might be the teammate, yeah. Rich. Oh, the teammate. So I, I, this is what I think, and I might be totally wrong. I think what they're saying is because the teammate was in the car, or whatever, and the guy that shot put the gun in the car in the trunk or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That other kid is not supposed to be because they got his gun at the um he gave him that gun at the hospital. He turned over he turned over his weapon. Mm -hmm. I think what they're trying to say is this other kid is gonna get in trouble because he, he's not supposed to possess a gun. But they're saying by him putting that gun in the car, if he touched it, or especially if he touched it, that's him possessing a gun, you know what I'm saying, illegally. I think that's what they're trying to say. So I think that's the teammate that 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 came over there to help them or whatever. Or a teammate that he called. I don't think that's the kid. That's the shooter. Because the shooter legally had a gun. Because the police, they have that video. The police was in the hospital. And he was saying, hey, well, when am I going to get my weapon back? His gun was legal. He gave it to him. He was asking him, when he going to get his weapon back? Are y'all going to send it to me? Do I have to come and pick it up? And all that kind of stuff. So I think that's the teammate they're talking about. Either way, this is bullshit. This is That that makes it even more bullshit. Why y'all bringing him into <laughs> yeah, this? That makes it you don't know if he grabbed the gun or not. That's that's just like seeing seeing a guy beat on a woman, right? And you like, oh boy, 
I I I did an overnighter, you know, six years ago. I I'm gonna go ahead and let him whoop her ass. I ain't gonna get into that. Mm. Okay. Uh, so this may sum it up right here for you, Kyle. New Mexico State Police claim Roy Muhammad and Avery arrived at a scene of a deadly shooting involving teammate Mike Peak on the New Mexico campus last month and left with Peak's gun and tablet before officers arrived. So none of the players have been charged with the crime. So Mike Peak is who you're talking about, right? Right. And so all uh, he did was Give right, he gave that stuff over to them, but you got to have proof that he possessed that gun and all that good stuff or whatever. So everybody in the chat saying he did it wrong. He didn't do wrong. He didn't, come he didn't on, man, wrong. y'all stop that stuff. He did not do wrong, and yes, he was he was past his curfew. I completely understand, <laughs> but once curfew. again, this is a very in- extenuating circumstance. Right, like if I Things knew, can be nuanced. I knew that my somebody's life was in danger, I, uh, his teammate's life at, at, at this point. In this instance, if you knew your teammate's life was in danger and there was nobody else you could call and you was the closest one over there, I'm going to go over there too. Mm-hmm. Well, if you call me, period, ain't nobody, you're not thinking about, hey, my teammate, call, my teammate calls me and tells me he's been shot in an attempted robbery. You think I'm going to sit there and be like, hey, bro, that's past my curfew. You might have to call coach on this one. Oh, come on, man. So who got killed? The guy one trying to rob him. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, so yeah, the, the kid that too, shot. The, the only ahead, reason Rick. the other two didn't, didn't double back is because his his friends pulled up in a car. Well, they're not. They cleared it when they heard them gunshots because I don't think the rest of them was armed. Them too clear because they heard them gunshots. We, so yeah, we don't know that. And, and, and they, um, they could have been. I mean, too just watching it. Just, be true that, true that, true that. But and that that's a lesson for other people when y'all doing dirt. Hey, your homeboy ain't gonna even come back to check on you. That's that's <laughs> that's a lesson for y'all. But um, yeah. So he 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 defended himself. He shot and called his friends to come and help him. Like if anybody gets in trouble for that, that's fool. even even a judge would say, you know, that's a warning or something. Because he, that's, come on, bro. Like, seriously. Like, like right. Rich say, that's, you know, circumstances are different, bro. Things can be nuanced. Y'all can't just look at it like, oh, he did wrong. Come on, man. Like, be, be real about that. Hmm. Why didn't you just call the cops? <laughs> Rob, he gonna sit there and bleed out? I don't know where he's been hit at. Like, come on, man. Y'all gotta think sometimes. And that's the first thing they'll say. Oh, you should left it to the police. No, no, bro. And what happens if he's young. sitting there waiting on the police and those two guys come back? I got to digest the story. The story ain't hitting me right. <laughs> I'm trying to put it together. Why are they talking about what this guy so much on the screen? Because, because they found out that he has a felony and he's on probation. And so they're trying to say him, he violated curfew and He's around the firearm. They're trying to say he so moved it or whatever. It. Right. But They're trying fr- to say he possessed it. But his friend almost got killed chasing tail. Right. They don't see it like that, Street. They don't care. They just saw a story that they can tell. And if they don't bring out this story, nobody, who knows if anybody even pays attention to it. But now it's on the news. So now his PO and the judge, everybody got to figure out, hey, 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 hey. But this should have just been a whole story about a man that defended himself and saved his life and about a little effed up girl and her three friends. That's what the story should have been about. Right. Hmm. But they say, uh, it's happened a while ago, though, right? It's happened like last month. Um, no, nah, this was the other day, wasn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was the other day. No, it said right here, Daddy Shooter involving Mike Peak on UNM campus last month. Oh, okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, last month could have been November. I mean, yeah, yeah that's a week ago. Yeah. Mm, mm. I saw it on Twitter like the other day, though. Me too. Okay. 
repeat suspended indefinitely. Yeah, I gotta read up on this story a little more, man. Cause all all the all the all the uh yeah, all the stories are like negative, like like that. And but what 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 was put in the group me was something telling the truth, right? Oh, I didn't see it in the group me. Yeah, that's why I saw it. Um, that's why I first saw that. Like it was telling like what really happened. Yeah, it was the original. Mm -hmm. Like it was like the initial story, and when you and it showed what happened, where you could interpret it for yourself. It showed him meeting up with the girl. Mm -hmm. You know he. he you know, having you know, trying to have swag, talking to her, leaning up against the wall, and then next thing you know, he see three dudes running at him, <laughs> and <laughs> and one of them at he he gets like in an altercation with one of them, and then when he sees the other two dudes kind of drawing near him too, that's when he starts like backing away, trying to run away, and when the man's trying to run away, the one dude pulls out a gun and tries to shoot him. Start shooting at him. What was that about, though? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, the dude is running away. You trying to kill him? Mm -hmm. And so, and so, little did that dude know that he had a gun, and he turned around, and started shooting back, and he he hit him five times. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hit him five times. Yeah. yeah. And it was and he, he was and he was not even aiming. He was still running. Shooting, mm -hmm. shooting with one hand behind his back, basically, and and just running. And the and the guy was still trying to run after him, and got hit five times mm -hmm. and fell. You know when you when your life is in danger or something like that, when you start squeezing, you ain't gonna stop. <laughs> so yeah, he damn right he got hit five times. You ain't gonna stop squeezing. Hmm. So what Nard just said is, he says, this is the thing, too. Nard just said, they said they tried to kill him over altercation at a football game earlier today. See, I can believe that it wasn't a robbery by the way it went. They just titled it as a robbery. Right. But I can believe mm -hmm. it right. because if you watch, you can see it on the video. It's the, like they they ran up on him. There's an altercation. One of them hit him with a bat. And he it's like they didn't, like you had a gun and you didn't like stick him up, go in his pockets or nothing like that. Y'all kind of allowed him to kind of like limp away. And then I don't know, you know, what decide what made the dude fire the gun. I don't know if he saw him reaching and he fired. Because he could have been shot if he wanted to shot if he wanted to shoot him. So, you know, I can believe that it wasn't a robbery, but that's that's what the story was. Was that it was a robbery or set up on ten. Either way, she set him up. But I guess she set him up for an ass whooping or whatever. What happened to her? I think she's charged with something. I hope, yeah, I hope, I hope she's in jail. Yeah, they, they're supposed her and the two dudes, like every state is different, so I don't know what their laws are, but this was Florida. Yeah. Oh, her and both of them dudes getting a murder charge. That's what I'm saying. Like, her and those other two guys should get a murder charge because... They're supposed to... It was doing way too much. Mm -hmm. hmm. And then the thing, like, and that's how I think that's how things happen. Like, I forgot who somebody famous, I can't think, but I've heard this story over and over. Sometimes you go with somebody to do something that you ain't got no business, and you don't know this person gonna pull out a, a pistol, or you know what I'm saying? The person you with, you don't know he either got a pistol or he finna use it, or he might be saying, Man, I'm just gonna scare him or whatever. And then you in something that you didn't sign up for. Like, they might have just been going just to fight, just to jump the dude or something. Right. Now you got a whole murder charge on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, even girl, too. She might have just been thinking, oh, they're going to scrap. They're going to jump him, whatever, whatever, whatever. And now your life over with. It's just sad. Like, it's, I don't take no pleasure yeah. in seeing yeah. stuff like that and, you know, knowing that they finna go to jail for the rest of their life and shit. Yeah, it's just crazy. And what's crazy is they're trying to bury an, another one too. They're trying to bury the, the dude who had a felony. Right, right. <laughs> like he did something wrong. <laughs> right. I, I'm, they talking about that. Like, and we also found out another dirty one involved. What the? <laughs> he ain't do nothing, did he? Right. Imagine how much. 
Imagine how much digging you had to do to go find that. Like, not that it was hard, exactly. but you had to think and say, "Let's let's let's go see what's on the other two. Let's go see their records." And well, let's, let's you really had to sit there and record. think about that. That's crazy, bro. Well, let's let's go check their record. What kind of nonsense is that? That that's protocol. That's what y'all do with everybody. Oh, I think they dig on everybody now. I don't. I don't think the nosiness stops at any color. <laughs> I think, oh no! But it's the fact uh, that you put that together. And you're like, ha! Huh, look at this. Well, I, I, I tell killed. you what. All right, whatever. Um, that, that's the <laughs> right. When 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 they said Brett Favre stole all that money, I didn't see nobody looking into Brett Favre's record to see if he had a private prior history of stealing money from <laughs> from a, a city. <laughs> they, they found out a little bit on Brett Favre, though, didn't they? They had a lot on Brett Favre, didn't they? For, that they, they can bring the up media. him exposing the, him exposing himself to the uh, lady on ESPN. They ain't bring up none of that, right? They ain't talking about none but of that. They're going right? to talk about this other dude, right? He yeah, hooked on, yeah. hooked on pills. What he was hooked on painkillers at one point in time. He hooked on painkillers. He joined his. Showing his little wee wee, wee the wee, wee I forgot girl. Was it was it Aaron Andrews? It was somebody else. Yeah. Pulling out his pulling out the yeah, weedy wacker. <laughs> Maddie, what you then think Port, about that? talking about that too. Port. Pulling out his weedy wacker. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what else did you walk into? Let's get you out the gate with it, huh? What Port is talking about? Uh, he points. said that same thing. He said like when when it, Clinton Porter's. He said when um he said when you know as soon as what thing happened, you know they took him off the ballot, right? They took him off the Hall of Fame ballot. He said, and I just became a face of something that I didn't even know anything about, right? And he's like, but he's like, you look at Brett Favre. He's like, you don't, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't hear nothing about that. Like you don't hear nothing about that. Like. And he said, but you see me, he's like, every time something come up, it's about me and this whole situation that I was pretty, I was innocent of and didn't know nothing about and all this kind of stuff or whatever. And he's like, but you see, they ain't, they, they dug for me. You know what I mean? But they ain't, they ain't dig for uh, Brett Favre. I'm like, man, oh, he that's said how that? the game go, bro. Outside of, outside of the mm-hmm. game, right? And, and, and we all know it. this. Go ahead, go ahead. I was say, outside of the blatant obvious, we ain't going to go down that road, but um, is Brett already in the Hall of Fame? Is he? Mm-hmm. I don't sure know. Is he? He? I think so. Might be. If he is, Clinton I should is, take Clinton him out. Is, Clinton is. Rich, you know how difficult it is to remove a bus from Canton? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how difficult it is. It's extremely difficult. It's almost unheard of. Um, well, it's unheard of to still be a multimillionaire. If they take OJ out of Canton, you know you're not taking bread out. Oh yeah, I boy, they tried. <laughs> they tried. <laughs> they didn't take OJ out. Who they no, tried? They OJ, out. Now, OJ ain't killed nobody. Very <laughs> 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 confused about that. With that, with that being said, y'all make sure I hit the like button, man. Before the algorithm. <laughs> Two, 2016, Brett Favre was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Hmm. Yeah, but that that wasn't well, his I gripe. Think, his gripe wasn't that Brett got in. He was just 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 stating the obvious, you know. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying about himself. But and my whole thing with with Brett's situation is that if you are gutsy enough to text somebody to give mm-hmm. that amount of money to a school, it almost seems like this ain't the first time you did this. That's what Porter's I'm was just, saying. I'm Porter, just say, saying. Porter said, you got text message saying, make sure nobody finds out about this or something like that. And right. like he said, but I'm the face of everything bad. Hmm. But I feel and Eric Kennedy said OJ sister, OJ, OJ's son killed that woman. What? what? Who, who's his son? OJ had a son? Yeah, he has. I think he has two. Does he have two kids? Cause one of his sons played football at like Palmetto or something like that. Really? Wow. Yeah. Years ago. 
Damn, he, used typed, to, he used to live in Florida. I typed in OJ son, and the first thing you come up is the OJ Simpson son killed Nicole Brown, Ron Goldman. Damn, dog. Oh, think boy. about that. Every time you met boy, a girl, yeah. she typed your name in. Cow. She she Googled your <laughs> name, Cow. And it'd be like, did Cow kill Big Bird? Thank God. Damn, <laughs> <boo."> <laughs> <laughs> Every time she Google you, that come up first. Hmm. Dang. Eric can be adamant about it too. Lawrence Taylor still there too. Yeah. Lawrence Taylor did. It's not a little. It's not a little. You know what? Yeah, he ain't doing much. Smoke a little powder. He I think they try to say messing with little girls or something at one point in time, right? Oh, I don't know about that one. Damn. Prostitution I remember them, them trying to say know. stuff like that. Right. Oh. I think it was pro- prostitutes of Asia. You know what? It, oh. Look, oh. there's so many people that was into the same activity as Lawrence Taylor. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Look, uh, Brandon Tooks, um, watch the... Uh, Watch that pivot with Clinton Portis, and you'll see why he's saying he did. Because he what? Will he break it down? Because I didn't even follow the story like that when it was happening. But he started talking about that, and he was like, he's the only one that really, really got in trouble. Like, as far as he just couldn't understand why. And they tried to tell him, like, bro, you you, you the biggest name in the pot. And he was like the guy. He said he named names. He said Fred Smooth and Sean Springs one introduced, like, got him into, you know, whatever. And he was like, them cats ain't even being indicted. And he was like, how the hell am I to face it? So anyway, it, it's, it's worth the watch. I got, oh, you saw it, Brandon? So you saw what he was saying. He was just like, he the one got in the biggest trouble for it or whatever. He's like, them other guys didn't even, I don't know. It was crazy. It's a good pivot watch, though. Y'all y'all boys got to check it out. The other guys were NFL players, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was a bunch of them. But he uh, was he was Clinton Porters. He's like, a lot of them guys, he said, he said y'all know the NFL is small. He said, a lot of these guys, I don't even know. <laughs> so, but he was clearing water. He actually served right. time. He actually sat in there for six months. Six months. Oh, he said, "Yeah, he said wow. they did him dirty too." He he explains it was uh, for something about something about his time served. Right? He could have mm-hmm. got like you know how you get early release, right? He's like he could have got early release, but they sentenced him to whatever amount of time plus a day. And the fact that they did that plus a day made it so he couldn't get out early. He, I couldn't understand the way he was explaining it, but he explained it. Right. And he was just talking about how like how dirty they did him and all that kind of stuff. Whatever. It's a good watch though. Hmm. Many, many in here twice. I watched the one with Wallow. That was a good one I watched the other night with Wallow from Wallow and Gilly. I ain't checked that one out yet. I like it. Yeah, I, that was a that was a good one. Wallow started crying and talking. You know, he did twenty mm-hmm. years in prison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good one. I talked about DVD already. Twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to add to it? What you want to add to it, dog? Huh? Everybody listening. Is nobody leveraging in that room? I mean, well, is it guaranteed that a die is coming back? Um, I don't think nothing's guaranteed until after signing day. In that, uh, in that in but it looks special, like it is. Look like it is. Special, in your special luncheon today, was, was staff <laughs> discussed? <laughs> Uh, um, one bird gave me the vibe of everything we say about Gaddis in 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 the cave. It's true, <laughs> but also that he is the next hot shot head coach. He's sharp. That's how people see him, and he feels Still? the system works. I said that's what I asked him. I said, "Rumble, well, even right. after the hor- after the horrible season, he it still would have been on that track." He said, "Still," he said, and he knows it. <laughs> so maybe, though, maybe they they don't call us geniuses, right? 
So you're not mm-hmm. going to hear anybody say it out loud, but maybe he's Mike Leach. Awkward. Can't really get along with nobody. You know what I'm saying? But knows his shit. Hmm. That's interesting. I ain't seen it yet. Yeah. Nope. I ain't seen it yet. I want to see it. I was surprised that he said that because he sat right next to me and Rumble sat right next to me. And I was like, so even if he had this awful season, like he still would have been on the track. He was like, yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, like they talk about him like, hmm. like he is. Yeah, he's he's the next guy. Like he's the next guy. Wow. Eric Kenny got an interesting comment. <laughs> what do you say? So, Maddie, um, did you know that South Florida's head coach was the OC from Tennessee? Is it South Florida? Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah, hey, what you think about that? Yeah, no, 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 no. He just got hired. From Tennessee. He just got hired. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I thought you meant. I was like, okay, yeah. So they OC going already. The OC from Tennessee, and that's who's trying to snatch a DVD. But then we then we just say that um, hypo calls the plays. In Tennessee? Oh, I don't know. I have no clue. I don't know, bro. Uh, so you think they got a Dan Enos over there? Yeah, I think I think they, I think when we was in the cave talking about it, they said you know they said that hype will cause the plays. Similar situation to like um, like in Texas and Brady. Oh, now Texas and then where it's like. Oh, like Jimbo and yeah, Jimbo got... calls the plays, but you know Coley yeah. and whoever yeah. to do was it Tillery to do they just fire? Yeah, they put the <laughs> plays together for the week, but really, yeah, Jimbo called the plays, and then the Tillery dude was basically the fall guy. So, mm-hmm. so I'm assuming Coley probably gonna move up because he ain't coming. Um, shit, he might be the next fall guy. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Coley better be smart. Because we know Jimbo ain't going nowhere for a long time. Yeah, a couple people. Yeah. Hmm. I say thank God it's not prime. Let's see. Who's somebody? Mr. Will say they somebody. Who getting Petrino? I've always liked Petrino's out. I've always liked Petrino offenses. Yeah, it's about as explosive as he is on the back of that motorcycle with a white girl. <laughs> hey, hey, man, if we do it fast, uh, baby. <laughs> Lamar Thomas. Lamar oh, said, you, Lamar said Petrino, Petrino was cussing him about, about Lamar Jackson in the beginning. Who was? Mm. Petrino. Petrino. You brought me this song. That, 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 from <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That's what I was trying to say to Sap. Like, I understood what Sap was saying. But that's what I was just trying to say that time when he, when he was on here. I was like, bro, you can't play for Petrino and not be able to throw. We, I ain't saying he produced world beaters, but you can't play in the offense and not be able to throw. What was the good quarterback name he had over there at Louisville? Uh, Brom? Was it Brom? Brom. Mm-hmm. Brian Brom. Brom. He had two Broms, right? Oh, no. There's a, there's a Jeff Brom somewhere, yeah, right? Yeah. I didn't know he was still coaching. Petrino been coaching D2, and he got to the playoffs the last I didn't know that either. Oh, me neither. Damn. He going to Texas A&M? Yeah, it says Bobby That's Petrino has emerged as a candidate to be Texas A&M next offensive coordinator according to 24-7 Sports' Chris Hummer. Oh, damn. That's, that's dope for them. This man's only six years older than Dion. Petrino? Mm-hmm. He's 61. I thought he was an older guy. I did too. Mm. But you know how the saying goes. Yep. Black don't, you know the rest. <laughs> mm-hmm. But no, I just thought just that name has been around for so long. I just thought he was just like one of them. Like, I thought he was like up there with Saban or some shit. 
Mm-hmm. Hmm. He looks sixty. That's a good pickup for him. How how Dion? Fifty at least, right? He's fifty five. Right. Hmm. So Island Boy says USF dropped the ball when Street. What you think about that? He said USF well, dropped the ball when they did not do whatever they had to do to get prime. Um, you think they? <clears throat> you I don't think, think they, goes there. You think they lost prime. I I don't think I don't think prime gains anything <laughs> by going to a G five school at this point. Right. Like he, like I said, he's fifty five. What he's supposed to do? Spend another four years? Be damn near sixty trying to get to the P five level? Like, you know USC, and you already know that USC and UCLA are moving out, right? That means the only team we got to really deal with is is Oregon and Utah, right? Um, I take I take those odds, and going to going to USF. But is USF moving up? No, I don't think so. I don't think I so. think with Dion they could they could though with all this realignment and stuff. Yeah, what's the best they can do? Big twelve, maybe. Yeah, another conference, uh, another conference you can kick ass in. Yeah, I think I think he I think he found the right spot. And then somebody I saw somebody point out the other day. I don't know if y'all heard this yet. The guy that he's getting at his OC ran the fourth fastest tempo offense in America. And then you mix that with the high elevations. In Colorado, <laughs> mm. Mm. my boys might be cooking with grease, man. Yeah, if you can get Dion enough kids Dion to get used to it. Dion knows something. You're always going to be able to draft your trench bullies up there and them damn snow, snow mountain, snow mountain bears and shit up there. All you got to do is get the skill playing. You know something. And that's what that's that that's what the snow for uh that's what the snow for uh medic uh, snow bunnies you can get them skill players <laughs> yeah I'm waiting to see who's gonna be the first uh guy to sign a, a marijuana and I L that's why the Ooh, marijuana that was brought it Colorado they was the first ones to they was the first ones to um to do their thing over there it was in um it was in Denver. Yeah. I yeah. tell you what, February 2021, they made $20 billion in uh, revenue off of marijuana sales. Mm-hmm. The only issue is they couldn't put their stuff, put their money in the bank. Um, yeah. I, I ran into, uh, God damn it, I forgot his, well, it was a Denver cornerback, long time, I can't remember his name. Anyway, he just, he he, he was talking to me and he was saying, um, Spencer, uh, Spencer, the Denver cornerback. Spencer? Uh, he was talking to me. Yeah, uh, I want to say Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy Spencer. Um, I think Jimmy's from down here, as a matter of fact. But he was in Denver with uh, Terrell Davis and uh, when they won um, Super Bowls, right? So he stayed there. He never left. He was just talking about how crowded and stuff is getting and how the money's going, everything is going up because so many people started moving over there because of how booming the marijuana industry was there. So it's going to be a lot of good things back there for Dion when it comes to, you know what I'm saying, what Medi is alluding to when it comes to all that. Yeah, man, it's going to be a lot of good things for Dion over there. The only thing I can see happening or I can foresee is, like, for example, like military, right? As a military member, I can't invest in marijuana stocks. No? Yeah, because the, really? yeah, the DOD considers that involvement. I figured out a loophole around that. I ain't going to say that on the air, but um, – Essentially, yeah, they they put out a memo when I was on my last deployment, basically said, hey, you can't own any marijuana. This is about the time that, you know, Canada was about to, as an entire, you know, country, legalize it. So I was making, like, stupid profits off of it. Um, So I had to sell off all my shares. But, what? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy, bro. Are they training, are they training you to right. kill people? Are they training you to kill people? Yeah, well, God forbid, I never mind. I ain't gonna go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should be able to do whatever you want to do. You are there to kill people. Hey, but um, I can see that if the NCAA gets involved, and then they like, hey, there's no way you can be involved with marijuana NIL deals and not be consuming it. Um, 
That's mm-hmm. why I can only see the only hiccup, especially considering you know Prime is a black coach. They might be, they might be looking extra hard into his his circumstances up there. But yeah, as long as them dudes ain't ingesting the shit and feeling no drug tests, yeah, I say go ahead and get your money. Mm-hmm. That's that's boy. Everything is a loop. Everything you have to. Everything is a hurdle, bro. Everything is a hurdle. Absolutely. It wouldn't have it any other way. Wow. They can't do CBD. <laughs> I wonder if they could do that Delta H stuff. Um, I was trying to ask people like, what was Prime for? Before we get up out of here, I was like, what was Prime? Fifty thousand apparel, so one hundred seventy-three thousand new followers. Instagram up one hundred forty percent. Six thousand tickets in a like that impact that he brought, dog. Like, what is he? And some of the first comments said underpaid. And that's, <laughs> and, that's, and, that's, and, and and dog, yeah, because that's true. You get into these arguments of wow, we're gonna see a prime for really coach now, and all of this stuff, but you're negating everything he is. I'm gonna say now, just like I said on the show a year ago, Street. Y'all better. I said this, um, and we talked about it last night in, in the cave. But yeah, like for him, it's gonna be worse than Mario because he's a black man and mm-hmm. he has a, a large following and a lot of expectations. So them people up there are gonna hold him to a way higher standard than Mario in year one. And yeah, they should definitely not. Well, it depends. It depends on how aggressive he's in the transfer portal. How much legitimate talent he could pull in. If it looks more closer to Lincoln than Mario, then yeah, he may not have too much wiggle room. But if it looks closer to Mario than Lincoln, you gotta give him some opportunities to really, you know, let things level out. And I'm only saying that because Lincoln was pretty aggressive in bringing in 15 to 20 guys that he knew was gonna be pretty much day one starters. Whereas you know, Mario took a very concerted and deliberate, deliberately slow approach to his 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 process. Bit him in the ass, in my opinion. But um, <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> See that? The bit him in the ass, right? Come on. Am I am I louder now? Turn it to you you, you good, good, man. Bro, you good, bro. You want to know? Go ahead, bro. <laughs> nah, um, I be t- I be. I got that same mic you got, Street, so I'll be turning the little thing down. Bro, anyway, you, you, you good, bro. You good, bro. Um, yeah, if if Dion takes a very aggressive approach and getting people because he wants to win now, then yeah, his, his leash is going to be pretty short. But if he Blows takes the up. slope, yeah, the if, he takes, <laughs> if he takes the Mario route, his, <laughs> then people got to understand up there. But in this age of college football, man, fans don't want to hear that shit. They want, they want success and they want it immediately. So, mm-hmm. But 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 can Colorado ask for success immediately? Sixteen losing seasons in seventeen years, bro. You be mm-hmm. look, look, look at the Kings fans. We but we're yeah. not near close to that, bro. <laughs> I get Sixteen that. losing I get, seasons in seventeen years. I get, I get that, Street. But think about it. Really, outside the twenty seventeen season, that was our only double digit win season in twenty years. Okay, so so let's tell this conversation real fast. Is it all about wins and losses? At the end of the day, yeah. It shouldn't be, but it is. And and with society and we get everything fast paced, mm-hmm. everything is immediate, everything is instant access. Yeah, it, it is. Everything is is there another value he could bring to that to that team, right? That ends up in being dollars, right? And it's like, hmm. This is the best starting moment that we ever had. Mm, not for long. Yeah. Not for long. Because that that not in this our society the way it is, not for long. It'll it'll give him four losing season and it'll all oh, that shit'll just wear off. And it'll, it'll be over. Look at look at how quick I think I think, I think we're gonna quick. watch okay, so this is what we're about to watch and what's gonna slow it down. You're gonna watch him paint his own narrative, right? With his own media. Right, I, I get why he wouldn't let under radar in now. It makes sense to me now. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because he, he he's going to paint his own narrative with his own media wins, winning or losing. You're going to watch. You're going to watch the journey. 
the media is going to start coming down on him, but at the same time, he's going it's going to he's going to slow it down because he's going to paint his own narrative through media. We're going to know why they lost. We're going to watch him fuss people out like hard knocks. You know what I'm saying? We're probably going to see it all. Mm-hmm. You're going to fall in love with a losing team. <laughs> watch. Yeah, that but that, 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 that honeymoon is going to be. Mm-mm. The honeymoon going to be last about two, maybe what? three years, and then the people going to start. I, I give them two or three years of that good honeymoon and, and everything that you're saying that I agree with. But after after a while, man, them people going to start. The street, I don't care how much they love us. You know that leash we got ain't going to never be too long, bro. Facts. I don't see how he I don't see how he can get worse than one win. It, it doesn't have to get worse. It just... Sky's the limit, bro. Is it? They, yeah. they won one game last year. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's the that's the floor. I was just that's the. Proverbial. So that's gonna buy my extra uh, extra year right now. Yeah, that's the proverbial and literal floor. You know, one win at the same that's time. That's the like, floor. Like, like once again, if he's aggressive in talent acquisition, them people are going to expect him to immediately change that team to at least a five win team. They're going to start putting lofty expectations on him in that leash, like Kyle said. And I said, it's going to start getting shorter and shorter. I could, they could, He can put out all the media he wants. But at the end of the day, the beauty of what he was doing at an HBCU is that HBCUs have generally never had – people have always said, people go to HBCU games for the band. They didn't give a shit about the football, if we're being honest. When he came mm-hmm. and changed that, when he changed that narrative, it brought a different light for people who actually cared about football. And they were bringing in – uber talented people on top of that so he should have went 11 and 0 shit people were saying that from the year one and he had the same approach very aggressive from year one pulling in guys he was on social media using social media hey man if y'all want to come out here coach prime play play you know at jackson state man hit me up on what's called send me a dm like and people took to that shit and was doing it he he he's He's gonna be. He's gonna expect to come into Boulder, Colorado, and at least improve that team by four wins in year one, at a minimum. They can't win two games next year. They're gonna, they're gonna look good doing it. Yeah. They, now, now, granted, now, granted, <laughs> same thing. Same thing. Now, now, if he's now if he's losing close games, cool. But if he brings in a whole bunch of high caliber recruits, and then they still end up getting blown out, well, fingers on start getting pointed at that staff first, the support staff, your coordinators. Stuff like that. They expect him to make some changes. If year two, if them changes don't happen, they are going to be on his ass. Okay, so the issue with Colorado, like I said, I heard Drummond talking about it, is getting kids in. Um, that's why your boy was only there for one year. Uh, this says uh, kids in. into administratively, like getting them actually in the door, like academics. Mm-hmm. Drummond kind of broke it down, like what what the problem is. Colorado don't take every kid. It's a private school or it's, or it's public. I'm not sure. Um, he said that's the issue that the guy with the Michigan State had. Uh, um, almost as, as if he spoke with him. He was like, "Man, I'll let y'all talk to him tomorrow." I mean, um, he was saying mm-hmm. that was the issue that he had. Uh, has it changed? I don't know. Um. But man, I think harder to turn around Jackson State or harder to turn around Colorado. 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 Hmm. The, the <laughs> level of competition at Jackson State is not that. You know what I'm saying? Is is because, like Mady was saying, a lot of the HBCUs don't care about football like that. So it's not much a whole bunch of competition that you're going on. It has nothing to do with the quality of players. It's just who really cares about their football program. Colorado is it's big business. It's the NCAA. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's big business. Yes, and you got a lot of fighting okay. on your hands. Yeah. That's what that's what brings up. You gotta think, even in the SEC, it's by, like people expect Vanderbilt to be successful every year. So when they go out and who is that team they beat this year that they had to beat since like 88? Who was that? Who? Vanderbilt. They beat somebody like within the last two weeks of the season that they want oh, to they beat Tennessee? Um, was it Tennessee? Was it Tennessee? No, I think uh South Carolina would be Tennessee. They beat some the Gators. I think it was the Gators. Florida, yeah. 
Mm. And them people, Vanderbilt should never have, Vanderbilt shouldn't even be in the SEC. But from the caliber of their conference and where they reside at, people expect them every year to be competitive. Mm. Like, they don't expect them to win the conference. They don't expect mm-hmm. them to beat the Alabamas or Georgia of the world, but they they have them down for one of them upsets, one of them, we never saw this shit coming type, type wins. And for them, that's that's their skill. That's that's what they okay with because they they reside in SEC. They know that they're never gonna. And Vanderbilt has very high acceptance rates as well. You know what I'm saying? Like right, acceptance standards. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um. Yeah, like like Kenny just said, they in there for the academics. Like they bolster the the, the academic prowess of the conference, but nobody expects them to be competitive mm-hmm. in football ever. Colorado is kind of in the same conversation, but well, Colorado was once. Was once good before. Yeah, they were, but at the same time, they're one, they one of my favorite teams at one time. Yeah, same time. Ben and me, and the, when they Pritchard and they ran the fucking whatever triple back, triple option, whatever the hell they ran the wishbone. Yeah, but at the same time, like there's certain schools that you just kind of know, like these are schools that's gonna always give us a fighting shot for the playoff. These are schools we kind of expect. You know what I'm saying? Even if they somehow win, fluky. We'll still give them a shot. Your Alabamas, your Georgias, you know, your Floors occasionally, you know what I'm saying? Things like that. Whereas a Vanderbilt, you know, maybe even a South Carolina, you don't look at those schools and be like, oh yeah, they definitely go. South Carolina is raw in women's basketball, and that's where it stops at. That's the cap. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not mm-hmm. like they're they're not a football powerhouse by any means. Whereas Colorado, like I said, academic school, academic institution, that you bring those in, they're good for an upset win every once in a while, every couple years. But you looking at the USC's and the, and the UCLA's as kind of like those pinnacle schools in the conference. With them leaving and expanding to the Big 12, yeah, it kind of opens the door a little bit for prime, but people are now kind of expecting Utah to kind of fill that, that void and then Oregon. Colorado can. Colorado can be, be up there and compete with him. I'm not saying they can't, but mm-hmm. probably better understand what he's walking into. Like that's not a that job is by no means meant for him to be successful. He got to kind of take it and define that role himself. <laughs> I think we're about to witness some shit, fool. I think so too. No, I'm just thinking about Tracy, Tracy Sanders, Travis Hunter. Like just just to think about that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. First year lining up, you may get Trey Sanders, Travis Hunter. Shadur at quarterback. It's, Are they both going? You know, one of watch it. I'm just assuming he will. They just, oh. you know what I'm saying? It just looks sleazy if they. Got me nervous. You're going to want to watch that. You know what I'm saying? For right off the back, you're going to want to watch it. It's going to look like something Colorado hasn't had in forever. Um, oh, I'm watching. If they, if they sign Devontae, I'm damn sure watching. He may, who knows? He may pull off another big time recruit in this. Listen, man, the, the man, I heard saw somebody saying they're they, they hoping he's a, their messiah. The man does some amazing mm-hmm. stuff, bro. We done seen it on the field, and now we've seen it off the field. And at what point are we going to believe? <laughs> at what point, don't, don't, at don't, what point are we going to cry this the, the one thing I'm worried about with him, and we talked about this, um, we talk, we've been talked about this, is when there needs to be something extra, like I don't know what that extra may be, all them people gonna get in his way. Like I understand what he brings to the table, what he brings in money, but man, you know how I can get, you know what I'm saying, especially at those schools. Although, like he he think about it, he had a hard time at Jackson State with a bunch of stuff. So I one of those people that was are gonna get in his way in some form or fashion. I think, I think, I think you're right. It happens all the time. But if I had to be in a room with somebody, my dark green and then with, with light green people, <laughs> I would want to be sitting with Prime because mm-hmm. I think he's dealt with them for a long time. Mm-hmm. So you're right. You're right. It's not going to be easy for him. Like um, at some point, they're going to be like, down, boy. And I think he's dealt with that. I think, <laughs> I, I, I think he's dealt with that. And I think he, I think he, if anybody could deal with that, it's, it's him. Not too many people gonna tell Prime, sit down, boy. You feel me? Yeah, at the same time, mm-hmm. like the people who was telling him before, 
didn't have the same reach and money that the people who are now about to try to tell him to sit down have. Who, so, Jerry Jones? Mm-hmm. Who are you talking about? <laughs> Whatever boosters Colorado got, Jerry whatever, Jones, huh? Yeah, I ain't whatever, whatever, whatever boosters Colorado got and all that shit. We don't know. Like somebody was just saying, they had stopped investing in the football program, so we don't know. Like they may not see what they like in two years, and maybe like mm, I don't know. But if We, we gonna keep giving this guy money. Yeah, man, but we don't see him go find money too, dog. We don't saw him go That's- find money for nothing. For Jackson State, like, but he not finna do that for them. That's one thing. Now he he not finna go find money for them motherfuckers because he know they got it. That's what they <laughs> That's what the buck gonna stop. Yeah. Dion ain't with yeah. the dumb shit. He's not finna that do was that. the funny part, he did, though. He did it at Jackson State out of necessity, like, right? Did it, right. Like, overly did it too. That yeah, was the did. funny part. Yeah. Though. The funny yeah. part was the AD saying, "Well, how did y'all get the money to land Prime?" And he was like, "Well, <laughs> we don't have it yet." And everybody was like up in arms about that. And I was like, man, that man said that like a joke. He got people who could s- sign checks. Like he's not worried about that mm-hmm. part. They get the thing. Right. Now, who wants to invest in Prime? Who wanna be a part of this? You know what I'm saying? That man ain't worried about mm-hmm. that at all. I I didn't want to even ask what happens if it doesn't work. Because I think there's an opportunity to work for it to work, but it really depends on the approach. Can he talk his way into explaining to people like, hey, this is going to take time? Or like I said, is this massive roster flip coming where it doesn't really give him time? Because that's the other thing that people don't tend to point out. Like sometimes you flipping your roster that quickly with that much talent in a short amount of time, it almost ostracizes you because people have ex- the expectations raised even more exponentially because they expect you because you brought in so much talent where it's like right if, if he takes if he takes the if, like i said he takes the mario approach he has an opportunity to constantly you know build up but knowing prime right. though being a being a flashy guy being a, a charismatic guy that people want to go play for it's going to be very difficult for not him not to initially flip his roster so they got facilities. They got all the stuff that the big schools got, but we'll see. Let's stop using the expectation word with them. They should have zero, dog. <laughs> we say they that. won one <laughs> game in 22. 22. They won four games in 21, four games in 20, five games in 19. What is the bar we're trying to – what is the bar that Prime reaches and they like, nah, bro, you got to do better? He got to win three games for three seasons? You know, it's funny because I don't because people have such short sniffs there, or well, at least Mel Tucker did. That <laughs> Are you we, looking at we, the name? Maybe yeah. time with that for a while. Yeah, we don't even know. We don't even know what it is. Like Mel Tucker got them to five and seven. They probably thought they won a goddamn Super Bowl. And then he bounced for Michigan State, right? We the 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 height, the height from Mel Tucker was that he had just came off of Nick Saban staff school for the several coaches, right? So he comes in. Probably not a lot of high expectations. He takes them to five and seven and gets another P five job in a in a better conference. So, the question is: A, how long do we know? Do we know the how long he was hired for? Who? Prime. Five years, right? Um, so I know it's five million a year. I don't know how many years. Somebody said he got. They were talking about the Kane. What's his name? They were saying that they only hired him for I think five years. I think four years or four or five, something like that. Let's look it but, up. But dog, like, but what, what, what would he have to? This guy right here. Okay, so, so Carl Durrell lowered the floor from what McIntyre did. McIntyre went five wins for three seasons, right? <laughs> yeah, five mm-hmm. years, twenty twenty nine and a half million. Hey, Carl Durrell was like, man, I can do better than that. I'm going to get your ass forward. You know what I'm saying? So, Prime would have to be horrible, though. Not necessarily, Street. We talking about how things work right now. We ain't talking about reality. We, we're not talking about how things should work, how we should be. You know what I'm Carl, saying? Like, Carl Durrell was black, wasn't he? Well, I don't know. 
I, I think so. Yeah, that is. I think, I think he is. He got three years. That boy went four, four wins, four wins, and one win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the expectations I'm, come in two years, they're gonna be praising Prime in two years, three years. I'm going on record. Y'all go ahead and screenshot it, record it. <laughs> what y'all want to do? Hey. All right, it says, mm-hmm. says Sanders, Sanders will be making a pretty penny in Boulder five years, 29 and a half million. Um, 5.9 million mm-hmm. average a year. He'll make five and a half million his first year, and then two hundred thousand dollar raise every year after that. Also, in a deal, if he leaves after one season. He owes them a fifteen million dollar buyout, so we got to give them half the money back. <laughs> the money that he don't currently have. Yeah, according to the Denver Post, Sanders will owe Colorado fifteen million if he leaves after one season, ten million after the season, after the second season, and eight million after the third season, and five million after either the final two years of the deal. Hmm. They say Mel Tucker was five and zero. Oh. And then injuries hit. What what year was that? He, no, he five nowhere. Five. That's not true. Five nowhere. And then lost seven straight. <laughs> Where and when? Come on. This year? At Colorado, he was three. No, no, no. Oh, they're talking about this year? They can't be talking about this year. No, they're talking about this year. They're saying at Colorado. He was two. Oh, now. okay. Then he lost to Air Force. Then he lost. Yeah, 12. then he was two, three, and one. Then he just ailed out. Yeah, Oregon. Yeah, you can see a talent different in Oregon. Oregon dog walked their ass. Washington State dog <laughs> walked their ass. Lost close to USC. That was what? Was that Sarkeesian's USC? Hmm. Who was USC's head coach? Or, or it might have been Clay Helton's USC. What year? 2000 and what? Seven, what, did, what year? Did 19? It, 19? Yeah, it might have been Clay Hilton. Clay yep. Hilton, 8 and 5. But no, bro, like, I just can't see Prime bringing in the kids that he's going to bring in and can't get four wins. Maybe year one. Maybe year one, they get three. Two. I'll tell you this, you know though. If you get them to, I, I think his, his, running like that. his goal got to be to get them to a bowl game. Even if the Charmin, the Charmin toilet paper shit for Brain Bowl, you know what I'm saying? Like, just get him to a bowl. Um, at least get him close. If you get him to five wins, yeah, they're gonna be, they're gonna be, they're gonna have to put a statue up of his ass. Mm-hmm. Grant said get, Grant said the, they're gonna be Stanford, Washington State, Oregon State. That's who they're gonna be. <laughs> shit. <laughs> like I said, we, we just have to, we have to see how, we have to see how aggressive his roster flip is. Hey, that's us looking at our schedule, right? Look at that, man. I only see two losses. You got Middle Tennessee. Mm-hmm. That's a win. Mm-hmm. That's a win. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Oh, but nah, that, like that first year, I don't care what he does. His first year, it, it begins the second year. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I think people should have enough patience for that at least. Forget the first year. Everything begins in year two. Um, like Maddie said, he can give himself, they can give him unrealistic expectations if he go ahead and just flip the whole roster, like right, right Ooh, now, which God. he probably is going to do. I'm they might right. throw that on him, but I, I, I'm hoping not. Go ahead, bro. I'm going to say this right now. They ain't winning no damn gimme because he at TCU. Who about to, um, they're a playoff team, right? Yeah, playoff team. Yeah, he, yeah. I, he, I don't know. He's gonna beat, he ain't going to beat them year one, I don't think. He got them. He, at TCU game one. Then he got he Nebraska at home with Matt Rule as the head coach, who's an offensive guru. Colorado State, that should be a dub. Um, and then if I'm being honest, I don't see any give me's through the rest of the schedule. In the end of his season, that boy is gonna have an absolute gauntlet. He got four road games at Oregon, at UCLA, at Utah, at Washington State. Hmm. Really? Who is? Yeah. That? Who is? Um, they call me Kenny. Are you in Colorado? I like this, this dude. Been dropping a lot of uh knowledge and information, bro. How you know so much about that school? Oregon State smash. No, I'm being Oregon. legit, bro. If Colorado beats TCU, all hell breaks loose. Is TCU? Is, will they be good next year? I mean, schools like that only show up once. They're gonna, and they... Yeah, they're gonna have a bunch of uh, uh attrition. Because probably a whole right. bunch of dudes going to get drafted, especially if they 
they are at least mildly competitive. No, they're not in the playoff. Are they in the playoff? Mar- Marco says Shallow loves JSU Ooh. and doesn't want to go to Colorado. TCU in the playoffs, right? Yeah. No, no, no it's Michigan. Didn't, didn't Ohio State win? It's Michigan. Is Georgia? Is Georgia, Michigan, Michigan. TCU? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. They play Michigan. Georgia play Ohio State. Yeah, they competitive against TCU. Oh, okay, because the uh, they got a they got a whole bunch of seniors on that team and juniors. They are very experienced, so guys is leaving regardless. Plus the transfer portal, so that whole team might look different next year. So there's an opportunity. They're going to be highly ranked. Like I said, it's going to be – and it's going to be on – that shit might be a game day site, if I'm being honest. Just because the magnitude of Dion and mm-hmm. at TTU on the road. Yeah, so. I'll be at Colorado, Oregon game next Look year. Look at what Kenny said. Kenny said – because Kenny, he out there. Yeah, you see it? He's talking about he's going to be at the yeah. Colorado, Oregon game out there. Kenny I, live there. Up, I, live, I live on the West Coast. Dude, you might need to go out there, dog. Yeah, they don't get nobody. We, we might need to go out there, though. <laughs> no. You can put in for now. He can't, he can't, he's not gonna deny this press. You got, hey, no, we just gotta <laughs> we gotta keep yeah. up with him. We, we gotta keep up. We got a mold stream. We're gonna keep up with Avante. Avante gonna be over there. Take yeah, take yeah. take a minute. I don't know. Oh. I hope he does though. I don't think he has yet, but I think he got the he offer. Said, I hope he, he does. Too cold for us to come over there. <laughs> different, different terrain, huh? We wouldn't even go <laughs> to track over there. Huh? Like, we got need some train now. Yeah, that's a mountain, and it's hard as hell to brew up there too. That shit is no joke. That shit is two, three thousand feet above sea level. The air tastes different up there. Hey Siri, take my ass to in Colorado. I ain't even. And 37 degrees in Denver, Colorado. Today's high will be 48 degrees, and the low will be 19 degrees. That ain't too bad for me. I'm used to it now. Bitch. <laughs> yeah. 19 be degrees. Yeah. Boy, the you know, high will be 48, and the low is 19. <laughs> oh man, we ain't doing nothing but staying in the house, warming up cocoa. <laughs> The high is 37. I got one for y'all. Man. I'm, I'm currently the high is 27. The low is four. Really? Yeah. You went somewhere today? <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> that shit around the corner. That shit on base. So. <laughs> what? You went, to go bowling? <laughs> you went outside the net to go bowling? Man, I'm yeah. not outside the net but Man, water. let me tell you something. And a- <laughs> Uh, uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's this called in the hooker's heart? Hell no, <laughs> man. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie here. It's called, <laughs> it's called in, in the Republican heart. Black and white Ooh. event. They they probably practice indoor every day, huh? Are you over there with a uh, wholesome man? Ain't wholesome? Yeah. Ain't y'all in the same state? Yep. Speaking of, yeah, the uh, Dion Dion and 24 got to go to – he coming up here to go see Holson. First game of the season, they got uh, North Dakota State. Do they? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, what? That's what's yeah. up. Yeah, that's the, uh, the three out of conferences. North Dakota Man, State, Nebraska, Nebraska, and Colorado State. All right, man, speaking of Holson, man, we've been on here two hours and 30 minutes, man. Y'all go find something to do. It's Friday. Hmm. Let me get up out of here, man. I got something right. you want to talk about. All right, bro. Appreciate y'all. Take it easy. Yo, seven eight six four five nine four nine nine. It's cute weather hit thirty five in September. It's cute to that weather hit thirty five in September. <laughs> y'all gonna get down with IOD squad seven eight six four five nine four nine nine. If y'all need a one on one or something like that, just just text me. Um. We started off with DVD, DVD, South Florida. We're hearing that South Florida will be pursuing Demarcus Van Dyke. 
Michael Van Dyke wants to be on the field. Um, all coaches do that. They want to move up in the coaching ranks. Um, so we'll see how that unfolds. But we knew this was going to happen. I mean, like I said, we shot a whole video about this the day before we heard anything about it. We knew this was going to happen. We knew that this is how it was going to unfold. Um, eventually, somebody was going to come after him. And um, Miami going to have to, what's the saying? Shit, get out the pot. Miami going to have to pull, pull, get out the pot. Listen, man, don't put off tomorrow something you can do today. The rest of your life could be seconds away. I'm D. I'm out of here.